Brought to you by Duncan's Diamonds, your direct diamond importer. Straight off the ledge, it's J.D. and Smitty! This is the Ledge Radio Show with J.D. and Smitty on 96K Rock. The phone numbers are 277-9600. And for the viewers watching on the Ledge Cam, it's 239-775-9600. Thanks to executive producer Tripod Billy, we are streaming live video at theledgeradioshow.com. You can also give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the Ledge Radio Show. Special thanks to our in studio producer, Sick Rick, and guest host, former U.S. congressional candidate Byron Donalds. Good morning, Byron and Smitty. Uh, good morning. What's up? What's up, Southwest Florida? I'd first like to thank our title sponsor, Duncan's Diamonds, for supporting the Ledge Radio Show. You can call them at 877 343 4883 or visit them on web at www.duncandiamonds.com for all your diamond and jewelry needs. Uh, thanks, Smitty, for that. We always got to. Uh... Give uh, thanks to our sponsors to keep the show rolling, right? I see you stacked the deck again, brought Byron Donalds in here again. <laughs> but there's a big surprise. Hey, man, you know. Big surprise. i, I got to do what I can do. I take, I, hand grenades, I take hand grenades in the trenches every week here. Had I known he was going to wear a Florida State shirt, I, I wouldn't have asked him to come in. <laughs> oh, no, come on now. It's game day. I'd like to have him actually talk to the, the mayor. I think it's Freeport. That's the guy that was talking about the, the jobs from, Sest- from Sesta. Is it Sesta? You got me. I didn't, I didn't plant. Yeah. I didn't plant this call. This must be from you. Uh, I, I tell all my friends to call. All right, let's uh, let's go to the phones real quick. Uh, we've got uh, Mayor George on line one. Mayor, you're on the Ledge Radio Show with JD and Smitty. Hey, good morning. Hi, this is George Collar at Freeport, Illinois, in the northwest corner of Illinois. Yes, sir. Uh, I had had the honor of being on the Ed Schultz show last night. Uh, Ed was in Freeport, Illinois, and supported the Sincata workers, 170 of them, whose jobs are being shipped off to China. Ah. What I tried to explain last night, Freeport's a great quality community. We just had a company uh, purchase a 200,000-square-foot building, employed 96 people, called TriStar Metals. And the reason they came to Freeport is because they truly believe in the work ethics of the people who live there. Unfortunately, these work ethics are being shoved aside with some side of because they're sending their jobs over to China, and they were still making a profit here in the United States. What do you attribute that to, uh, Mayor George? Well, everybody's tightening down. Everybody wants to maximize the profits. And right. they're, they're doing it with a, the lowest labor cost possible. It's unfortunate because the more we spend over to China, the less people we have working that have disposable income to purchase products uh, that go in that, that uh, are the outcome of these products. I, I it, agree. It's a shame. Yeah. And, and you know, it, I, a, the, the last time that we talked to you, it's been uh, it's been a couple of months, I think. Uh, yeah. You know, we we had talked about uh, a company up there that Bain Capital owned, and, and you had mentioned that that they had shipped some jobs overseas. Uh, but of course, as we all know, Romney's not been with Bain for a while. So, uh, no, it, no, not not at all. I was hoping, and I was very inviting. I know that the Sensato workers would like their pound of flesh from Governor Romney. Uh, we had invited him. I personally invited him and his campaign. They come to Freeport and just explain, you know, he's the architect of outsourcing. And if anybody could change the tide of outsourcing, it's somebody who was involved from the beginning. And I'm hoping that during the presidential campaigns, both him and President Obama will really lay out the plan step by step on what they're going to do to bring jobs back to communities like Freeport, Illinois, and our nation. And, and that's, that's all I personally am asking for. Is to see the candidate, listen to the candidate. There really has a plan moving forward. Hey, George, we have a guest here, uh, Byron Donalds. Um, he, he'd like to ask you a question, actually. Sure, well, sure. First of all, Mr. Mayor, thanks for being on the air. Question for oh, You're welcome. Qu- question for you. Um, what's, the, what are the, what's the corporate tax rate that, that this company is currently paying in Illinois? What's the, what's the Illinois rate? Uh, we already know what the national rate is. Comparatively speaking, what is the overall costs of them sh- going to China and the shipping costs of their materials back from China? Um, uh, they, they, yeah, they, they haven't shared the cost with us. I know they had a 40% margin because I had friends who were engineers at the plant, uh, and they had knowledge of that type of information. Uh, yeah, Illinois is a whole other uh, question by itself on our corporate tax rate, uh, all of our taxes in the state of Illinois, we have to learn how to fund our way away from taxation and make Illinois a more productive and business-friendly state. 
as the mayor of the city of Freeport, over eight years, I've balanced my budget, and we have a double A rating, even in the state of Illinois. So it can be done. It just takes a lot of hard work to move forward. No, that's wonderful. Now, I, I, I appreciate calling in, and, and, I, and when, I, when I called in earlier, I told I'm in Chicago at the Illinois Municipal League, and I'm moderating a session that starts at 9.15 our time, 10.15 your time. I'd be happy to call back in again or another time, but I probably only have time for one more question. Go ahead, Byron. Go ahead, I know you've got something. Well, no, here's the follow-up. I understand you're doing a wonderful job balancing your budget in, in your city, but obviously, if you're not sure what the, or if not sure if you do, or if you are sure what the tax structure is in the state of Illinois, maybe that's something you should go to Springfield for first to see if there's some relief that the state can give companies in your area, as opposed to putting that on Governor Romney. I mean, he's not even president. So. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I understand that fully, and we do go to Springfield for relief and incentive programs. That's how we were able to keep a company like or entice a company like TriStar Metals to come to our community, along with Snack King, who just purchased Vintner's Snack Foods. They're expanding also in our town, in our, in our community, and in the state of Illinois. And, yes, Illinois does have to do some work. The problem with Sasada is they bought this line from Honeywell, leased the building for three years, and three days later said, we're leaving. They told all their employees they had, they had three years, over a period of three years, 170 jobs are going away. Did not give anybody an opportunity to talk with them about some of the packages, uh, nor would they listen to anybody. And, and that was a shame. Um, it's unfortunate that way. Well, Mayor but George, we, I, I, we appreciate, I appreciate you. your time. Yeah, thanks, thanks for calling in, buddy. We'll in. talk to you soon, okay? You're welcome. Thanks. You got it. You know, Byron, when it, when it comes to this, one thing that I don't agree with um, with what the mayor said is that Romney was the architect of, uh, what did he say, the architect of sending jobs overseas? Yeah. So, something along those lines. And that, that doesn't make any, that doesn't even sound remotely plausible well that's that's what they they coined him on on um you know certain certain left-wing media outlets well no no yeah. no some of the people had said that because he was from bain that that's what he did he leveraged oh. companies and he sold them and moved them out of the country oh wait quick question so. is bain capital the only company in the history of the world that had to come in restructure a company no but i guess some, they're, they're, i think they're the babe ruth of doing that you know they're like the best oh, at it my God. i think you maybe they're I mean? only the, they're the babe ruth because that's who's running for president yes. you just don't want to admit you've got it. a guy that has, that has you don't no want, record to run on you don't want to admit it that the guy has no has no corporate patriotism at all Corporate? Pay- what are you talking about? He's moving. Pay- he's you know? moving jobs off off seas. Hey, Byron, he's selling his leverage. And- how, how many? How many? How many? Uh, yeah. How many employees we got with GM over in China right now? It's two hundred thousand corporate uh, employees in China. Not our people working in China. Two hundred thousand Chinese right. working for GM over there. That's where the big the, the big expansion came from. Was was that's where they they show all the jobs? Is the Chinese that are working on GM products in China? Because because more people are buying our our vehicles in China now. That's why. Oh, okay. Isn't, isn't they that, are. The oh, question they are. though. So is that a bad thing or is it a good thing? And, 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 because exactly. the purposes of free trade is to lower the cost of products to increase the purchasing power for but, all people. But, but it's always profit over people. You know, it's always the profit at the top and the middle class gets shut out. That's what the problem is. The middle class always gets screwed in the end. Smitty, you know that. But here's the question for you. The shirt on your back right now. Made in China. Shirt, <laughs> no, I don't know where it's made. made in Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Shirt, Bangladesh. shirt probably costs, what, you know, it's a nice looking shirt, man. It's pink. As you can see, it's pink, for the cure. I know. It's 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 breast awareness week or month. He Let's say that shirt costs thirty dollars, right? Thirty dollars <laughs> off the rack, right? Thirty seven dollars. Seven dollars. No. If the shirt is manufactured in, let's say, Michigan, okay, that shirt will probably cost you fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. What is that? How does that help middle income families who can't afford a fifty dollars shirt but can afford a thirty dollars shirt from Bangladesh or China or Taiwan or whatever the wherever it's made? Well, I, I, I think it comes with the markup on any product. If you have a shirt or or whatever product you can make here, and we all know. There aren't many products made here in the United States anymore. I mean, let's face it, there aren't. The markup they, isn't in what's the last, the cost of since that shirt two, up. Since 2000, 50,000 manufacturing plants have left. That's just Would you, wouldn't you that's mean crazy. To when, you, when you've got the highest corporate tax rate well, you know, in the world? Do you know why? The, do you know why they have high corporate tax rates here? Do you know why? Because this is the land of plenty. Okay, this it is, won't be for this long because people this are moving is, out. This is like buying waterfront property. Okay, so when you want to open up your place over there in Bangladesh or some place like that, you're right. You can get a guy to work for a bag of rice. But what it does do, it doesn't help the people here keep your cost and standard of living help. If you lower your standard of living, you're, you're garbage. You know, free trade rises the standard of living every time it is done. I completely disagree with you're, your argument. You're crazy. Because you're, uh, you're crazy. You're crazy because we're you're free lowering. trade now. We're losing to China. That that's good. That's good. You you support that? Absolutely not. What we have to do is become competitive with. 
with China, with the Canadians. Okay, how do you, okay, how do you compete with China when you're paying guys a well, dollar start, a day? Let's start by lowering our corporate tax rate down to something sustainable for business. That's right. You, if you raise taxes on businesses, they will so leave. How, how far do you lower it? You, you know what you do? How you far lower you lo- it to the, to the, low? be the lowest in the, in the, the, lowest world. In the world, Dude, right? Hold on, hold on. Because lowest, here's the, here's the, the world. fundamental misconception we always come to. The president talked about it in the second debate, about how during Bill Clinton's time in office, to his tax rates, you created 20 million jobs or whatever he said. Mm-hmm. Tax rates have nothing to do with tax revenue. Economic growth has everything to do with tax revenue. What we want is a growing economy. If you have a growing, bustling economy, the government will receive more revenue. In 2006 and 2007, I know I talked about this before on this show, that is the most federal revenue we've ever received in Washington under the dreaded Bush tax cuts. The Bush tax cuts, which we are giving tax, we're, 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 we're having tax expenditures. So, so you're for going back to the Bush. You're going. You're, you're for going back to the Bush tax. Going, going back. back. We're still right in here. It. It's where we are right now. It's been like twelve <laughs> years. <laughs> no, going back. They're not tax cuts. This is the taxes. This is the tax base. It's right not now. good enough. For that matter, Barack Obama is in favor of going back to the dreaded Bush tax cuts because he signed the extension. Except for on the the, the wealthy. He wants that to go Oh, no. On. In 2010, oh, he no, signed he did. the extension. No, he absolutely did in 2010. So he was in favor of the Bush yeah. tax cuts. And he even said, and he even said that, that by raising taxes right now would be dreaded, dreadful for this economy because I remember there was an audio clip of him that said, if you raise taxes, our revenue will go down. It That's is bad for the economy to raise taxes. So he didn't. But now, all of a sudden, now he wants to raise taxes. Well, you have to. I think it's it's a it's across the board. You have to raise a little you bit. You don't of taxes. raise taxes. You stop your spending. I, I, well, you stop your spending. I, I think you got to do everything. We don't have a taxing problem. Wants, we have a spending problem. What you want is you want more revenue in Washington. I get that. Everybody understands that. You need more revenue in Washington. How do you do that? By raising tax rates which takes down the productivity of an economy, or by lowering tax rates, which increases capital investment into an economy. You don't think there's money out there now for people to invest, is what you're telling me. The only reason why... The, the billionaires and the ultra-wealthy and the real... They're not investing now. Why? Why would they invest? I don't Smitty? know. They, you're, why would Adelson they gave right $34 billion to, to Romney in his campaign. He don't have any money, does he? Why would they invest? <laughs> why not you know take what? all that's the money? That's, that's, a good, that's, that's a good investment. That's a good investment to buy a politician a instead of turning around and help a, a business. No, you're not buying a politician. Is that what you're Buying if you're, if you're a politician. To get that's going to lower He's the corporate tax buying rate. a politician. Hey, listen. George Soros and uh, Warren Buffett have an able to politician. I don't think they've given Obama? enough. I don't think they've given close to what your boys were given. Oh, I disagree. Not the shame. Because the only people who complain about PACs and super PACs are Barack Obama so and the you, Democrats, but they've had them for a long time. So you, they so, are funded so, too. so the super PACs now, people yeah, can ahead. people can bunch a bunch of money together, yeah. put it in a super PAC, and yeah. nobody knows where it came from. Actually, that's not true. You that's need not to go true. check the FEC rules. So, super PACs, you have to disclose. What they're talking about are 501c4s, like AFP, where you don't have to disclose. But if you use a super PAC, you have to disclose who gives yeah, that, that money. And that money is... That money is I, I think I everybody ought to be exposed. If you're giving a lot of money, I don't just care don't if it's... don't expose yourself. I don't, yeah, don't expose yourself. <laughs> but but if, you, if you have $1,000 you're giving, I think you should be, you know... Held hey, listen, accountable. Before we get too too deep into this, I've got a caller that's been waiting Absolutely. patiently on hold. We've got uh, Lee Bouchon running for sheriff on line two. Uh, Lee, you're on the Ledge Radio Show with J.D. and Smitty. Hey, Lee. Hey, good morning, guys. How are you? Good. What's, What's up, going my on, friend? Man? Well, good. I was uh, I was uh, uh, very happy to call in this morning. So, well, you know, you got my undivided attention. I hope I got yours here. So, well, you t- know, I really appreciate you taking the time. So I know you're running for office, Lee. How do you think it's going so far? I, I'm, I'm, I'm tickled pink, you know. I am too. Uh, when we started this thing and, you know, we, uh, we made the move, the nonpartisan approach to it. And, you know, everybody has, uh, been very open and very receptive to, you know, law enforcement being as apolitical as we can possibly make it. And, and that message is just resounding throughout the community. The support, uh, is, uh, is great. I, I, uh, I'm very energized, very charged and, and, uh, very happy to see where we're at today. We had your opponent on here last week. I saw, I saw. Well, I or let's say I heard about it anyway. I didn't get to catch your show that morning, but uh, I'm sure he had nothing but nice things to say. Actually, I don't, I don't even know if he said too much about his opponent. No, I asked him who he was running against. He said Lee, Lee Bashan, and he yeah. also said he doesn't want to mention his opponent's member. Well, I <laughs> he think said he, his... he said it's, he said the number one rule of politics is don't mention yeah. your opponent. And I said we want to be fair and balanced. So, um, <laughs> it, what's the there biggest you go, difference you that, between you and him? What, what do you think the biggest thing that stands out between you two guys? Well, there's two things right off the bat. Number one is is I'm not using the sheriff's office as any kind of political pulpit. Uh, you're not going to see me making endorsements for any candidate. You're not going to see me using it. You know, I, I know I know my opponent likes to you know say he's a politician, 
Okay, well, that's great, and, and I think politics have their place, but I don't think that when we're talking about accurate, fair uh, law enforcement, you know, uh, or ethical law enforcement, that, that we should, you know, take sides between one side or the other side, regardless of our personal affiliations and our personal beliefs, you know, law enforcement is, is supposed to be blind. And, and I got a lot of inspiration for this from our judges. You know, uh, judges can be Democrats, judges can be Republicans, um, or they can be no party. They can be whatever they want to be, but, you know, you don't see them involved in political process, even though they're part of a political institution also. You don't see them out actively in it. I feel very strongly that law enforcement should be the same way. That's thing one. And thing two is, is um, you know, uh, uh, well, I, I guess this is more or less along the lines of, you know, lead by example. And, um, you know, I, I believe that, well, let me put it to you this way. There's two things recently here that have come to light that will illustrate what I have to say better than me trying to point them out. And, uh, you know, one is a, a website that just popped up called SaveLeeCounty.com. Now, uh, on that website, there is uh, a very good friend of the sheriff, a very strong personal, um, you know, friend of his, and, and this has caught media attention over the years. Um, but, you know, this friend of the sheriff who he's defended on many times, you know, this is a guy, you know, that's been involved in murder and money laundering, $100 million, extortion, kidnapping, weapons violations. And, and these two, you know, had this ongoing friendship. And, and, and even to the to the degree that there's an affidavit in there that this guy that's that's done all this stuff has unbridled and unrestricted access to the sheriff's office. He's got a card. He can walk in at any time. Hey Lee, Lee, where that did where did me away? Who who put the website up? Do you know? I'm dying to know. I'm dying to know. There's a guy on there called Cowboy Fan, and I'm trying to track this guy down because uh, call in Cowboy Fan. Call, call in. <laughs> yeah. Right. I want to know who you are, Cowboy fan. You can, you can get a hold of me anonymously through my website. Lee wants to meet you. <laughs> well, be careful, because he might be trying to dig up dirt on you, too. <laughs> that could very well be, you know. But let's talk about something that, that uh, let's talk about something else here that, that's gathering a lot of uh, publicity lately, and this is this whole union thing. Hey, um, Lee, Lee, just so you know, we yeah, got sir. about a, we got about a minute before the break, okay? Can, can you hold? Well, you want to get, you want to go to, you, okay, well. Uh, look, I'll, I'll say that for when we come back. You going to have me on after the break? Yeah, we can do that just for just for a few moments, okay? Okay. Well, I'll just, I'll just put it out there real quick. Is All right. that, you know, we've got this whole thing with the union, and and you know, we've got some money that was given to people that are non-union, and, and there's a lot of controversy between these things. So let's talk about that in a little bit here in just a few moments. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot. We'll come right back. Yeah. This is the Ledge Radio Show. We'll be right back. Find out where 96K Rock will be next. 96K Rock is constantly hitting the streets. And you never know what you can win. Custom K Rock t-shirts, concert tickets, sports tickets, and more. Plus, you'll always get a cold 96K Rock custom-labeled bottled water from Hoosier Wawa. To order, personal or business, one case minimum, call 403-WAWA. For more information and to find out where we'll be next, visit 96krock.com. I am Matt Miller. You are Matt Miller. We are Matt Miller. Vote for me November 6th. Or you can vote early at the Supervisor of Elections, downtown Fort Myers, so we can make a difference and restore fiscal responsibility and economic development to our area. I am a believer. I am your neighbor. I am you. I am Matt Miller, a fair and responsible choice. Political party advertisement paid for and approved by Matt Miller, Independence Party for Lee County Commissioner. Securing your family, your business, your property. That's what's important in your world. No matter how big, no matter how small, secure your world with Imperial Fire Alarm and Security today. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security is a local company with hometown service the way it should be. One call to Imperial will align you with the most effective fire alarm security and surveillance systems as well as state-of-the-art wireless monitoring. If you're a property manager or condo association member, ask about Imperial's wireless monitoring systems to replace costly and unreliable phone lines and save your community thousands. From individual homes to large communities, Imperial Fire Alarm and Security can secure your world. Don't you think it's time to secure your world? Imperial Fire Alarm and Security services leave Charlotte and Collier County. Learn more at imperialfiresecurity.com or to schedule your free consultation, call 239-288-6482. Secure your world at imperialfiresecurity.com. License number EF200046. When it comes to landscaping, farming, or just cutting the grass, no one knows more than Matt Miller Tractor. They offer a huge selection of tractors and mowers for all your needs. Whether it's large commercial development or a small family project, they are your one-stop shop. Matt Miller Tractor is dedicated to providing their customers with the top-of-the-line 
design products and services, all under one roof. Matt Miller takes great pride in his customer service, bringing top brands to you and offering best of industry warranties on all product lines. If you're looking for that one of a kind maker model, they have all the top names Snapper, Polar, King Cutter, Briggs and Stratton, and more. Sale, service, repair, and maintenance for 20 years. Once you experience their down home approach to business, you'll see why Matt Miller Tractor is second to none. They treat each customer like a neighbor because that's what you are. Call Matt Miller Tractor at 239 693 0305. That's 239 693 0305. Or stop by the store at 7261 West State Road 80. She thinks my tractor's sexy. The pre owned Lexus vehicles at Jermaine Lexus are better than exceptional, and so are the prices. So we've created a new word to describe them Lexceptional. Right now, get exceptionally low prices on every certified pre owned Lexus in stock. Hand-picked local one-owner trades and lease returns certified by the factory and backed by a three-year, 100,000-mile warranty and 24-hour roadside assistance starting under $20,000 and financing as low as 0.9%. And every Jermaine Lexus comes with Platinum Club membership benefits featuring complimentary car washes, oil changes, and more. But these exceptional deals can't possibly last. So hurry to our all-new state-of-the-art facility at Jermaine Lexus of Naples on the corner of Wiggins Pass and US 41. It's truly Lex exceptional or call 1-866-49-LEXUS and online at germainelexusofnaples.com. Price plus tax tag title and dealer fees financing on select models for a limited term with approved credit expires month end. When your family goes through drastic changes, it's important to have an attorney who understands your legal rights. I'm Mike Chinopoulos of Absolute Law in Fort Myers and I have experience in a wide range of family law matters. Maybe you have questions about divorce, custody, visitation rights, paternity, or child support, I can help. Call Absolute Law at 239-349-8010. As an experienced attorney and former judge, I will be your advocate. I can explain your options every step of the way. Now, more than ever, you want to make sure you're doing the right thing for you and for your family. And that Absolute Law will aggressively represent your interest. So let's sit down and talk. Call today for a free consultation. 239-349-8010. Remember, when you have questions concerning family law, Absolute Law can help. Call me, Mike Chinopoulos, at Absolute Law, 239-349-8010. That's 349-8010, or find us online at AbsoluteLaw.net. Absolute Law, a law firm you can trust, absolutely. Oh, oh man, what? happened last night what happened the sandy parrot happened every thursday ladies drink free all night got cheap drinks for the guys too dollar drafts and two dollar bottles five dollar jaegers 250 captain and bacardi's so be tuned to this friday and saturday night summer drink specials continue the sandy parrot halloween party saturday october 27th huge cash prizes gentry every tuesday two dollar drinks from 10 p.m till 2 a.m the sandy parrot on 41 south of Aliko road visit the sandyparrot.com for more details or call 454 tiki this friday night yabo is proud to present a blues and soul performance from the juice show starts at 10 so make sure you get there early to reserve your seat not only will there be great live entertainment you can also enjoy some award-winning cuisine that only Yabo can offer. Yabo is located at 16230 Summerlin Road in Fort Myers. This Friday, don't miss out as the juice rocks the stage only at Yabo. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Now back to the Ledge Radio Show with J.D. and Smitty on 96K Rock. Welcome back. The phone numbers are 239-277-9600 or 775-9600. You can check out our live stream at theledgeradioshow.com. You can also find us at facebook.com forward slash theledgeradioshow. If you'd like to advertise during this show for our new primetime slot every Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon, visit our website, contact us for details. All right, uh, so we got uh, Lee. Lee Bouchong holding on uh, line one for us, I believe, or line two. Uh, Lee, are you back with us? I'm here. All right, buddy, sorry about the break. Uh, sometimes those come up. So, so t- get, get tell us what your dirt is, man. Yeah, how about them Cowboys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If I had time to watch those, my friend, I would be a better man right now. I got you. I, uh, I haven't had much of a chance, but uh, well, why don't you tell me? Catch me up real quick. How'd they do? Oh, I don't know. I thought maybe it was, your, it was a team of yours. I wasn't sure. 
Oh, no. No, no. If I was to go with anything, I'd stay with my old San Diego Chargers, but I don't think they're even doing that well this year. So I got gotcha. you. Yeah, so, but anyway, you know, to pick up where we left off there a little bit. Um, you're talking you know, about money. Of, yeah, we're talking about money. Yeah, we're talking about a lot of money, $2.5 million almost, you know. Well, um, you know, that was given out to, you know, a number of uh, individuals over at the sheriff's office in, in what some call a union-busting tactic and what others are calling a waste of money. You know, these these things are a concern to us all here as, uh, you know, uh, as citizens of Lee County is, you know. It's a lot of money. What, and what, what was it exactly? What what was the what was the reason behind it, do you know? Well, uh, you know, the, the sheriff claimed to have made a, uh, a bonus, you see, to uh, for the hard work that the men and the women of the sheriff's office do. And don't get me wrong, they do a lot of good hard work. But, you know, he wasn't quite accurate in doing it. You know, Florida statute says two things. It says you can't compensate a public employee for work that they've already performed. It's illegal. And if you wanted to set up a bonus, then you have to, you know, meet certain criteria. You know, you have to have a, a time, you know, frame in which to judge them and, you know, the criteria by which they're going to judge by it. Everybody has to be included. This is written right into the Florida statute. None of this happened. Well, what? Well, you know, now, now, hang on a second. If, if it's illegal... It has has he been brought up on charges? Then I mean, I'd assume that that he's going to going to court or something for this, right? Oh yeah, I understand that there that there has been uh, lawsuits filed, and you know when we when I actually pulled up the statute and uh, and I read it, 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 it's not a criminal violation. Okay, illegal doesn't always mean criminal. It, you know, it has other sanctions and, and other aspects to it as well. But you know, the attorney general's office has ruled many times over in the same very type of case that this action is prohibited by state statute. Okay. And uh, so, you know, what is the fallout going to be? I mean, uh, are we looking at a class action lawsuit here, and, and you know, the taxpayers are going to be uh, holding the uh, the bill for this, or, you know, is this simply going to have to be undone? I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. So this would be, a, so this would be a class action lawsuit uh, between the... The, the who the union the union members versus the non union members, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, versus the sheriff's office, the union versus the uh, versus the Lee County Sheriff's Office, and probably ultimately versus the uh, the Board of County Commissioners. Now, I was uh, I think the board did did the right thing by redacting you know the the amount that the sheriff gave to um, you know the non union members from the annual budget, you know uh, for for fiscal year 2013, the budget that just started here a couple weeks ago. Um, you know, uh, so that limits their liability, and hopefully it limits the liability to the taxpayers, um, you know, as a whole. But, you know, did it happen? It happened. And, and was it right? You know? I didn't well, get I any of it. Both sides. He could, have sent me, he could have sent me a couple bucks. So I didn't get any of it. He gave you a ticket. <laughs> Give me a ticket. <laughs> Give me a ticket. Smitty was speeding. No, I you got heard a ticket. About that. I heard about that. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll tell you that. Know. Why didn't you have him fix it? <laughs> You kidding me? <laughs> you know, we asked him. He said he couldn't do that. He said yeah. it was against the law or something. Yeah. I don't know what he was talking yeah, about. Yeah, I don't know. Crazy. I gave, stuff. Him a, oh, gave, I, gave him an envelope, said so spread it around, but he didn't want to do that either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, listen, if he's willing to bend the law to give out money, maybe he could have bent the law a little bit to help you out. You yeah, know? really. Well, uh, I, I tell you. Well, listen, Lee, we, we, I appreciate your call, buddy. Um, good luck. You know, and if you, if you want to come on the show, just, you know, shoot me an email or something. Go to the website, shoot me an email. We, you know, we'd be glad to get you on. Uh, we got a couple weeks left before the election. Uh, we can get you some more time here in the studio. Maybe you get, a, maybe get you, you, you. And, and, and Mr. Scott on here and do maybe, a little debate. Yeah, I'd, maybe I'd so. love to do that. You know what? Would you be willing? I would love. I'll tell you what, I'll send you an email. I have been dying to debate this man. I have called the debate with him so many times, and he absolutely, I was just reading an email from him here. He absolutely refuses, refuses to debate me. Why? Is, what is wrong what with him? He's he's a nice guy. He's sharp. He's articulated. He's a politician. Articulated. Hey, he, 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 he's also he can, matric he can matriculate himself down the down the field. I mean, what's going on? Well, you know, yeah, exactly. That's what I told him. I said, hey, you know, the Mike Scott I knew, you know, was a take charge kind of guy who didn't fear anybody. So, I mean, what are you hiding from me? I mean, look, let's talk about some some things that are very important here. Come on, Mike. And, you know, and, and uh, he's calling you, know, you out, know. Mike. He's calling hey, you out, Mike. Lee, oh, I'm calling him. Listen, I'm Lee, calling shoot him. me an email, buddy. JD at the dot com. We'll, we'll get you set up on here, bud. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to come in. We can talk about my 14-point plan. We can talk about a lot of other things. But, yeah, let's do that. I'll send one All over right. to you here in the next few minutes. <laughs> All, right, All right. Thanks th a lot, buddy. Take care, man. Good luck. All right. See you. All, right. All right. I've got, um, before we get to our special, special guest, um, I've got uh, one of Smitty's best friends, and I think one of Byron's best oh, friends, too. Paul. It's Militant Paul from Cape Coral. Militant Paul. Militant Paul, 9-1. 
Hey, good morning, fellas. How you doing, Smitty, man? You look like a big stick of cotton candy in that shirt, buddy. <laughs> Don't be a hater, Paul. Don't be a hater. Don't be a hater, okay? This is for the cure, Paul. For the cure. Hey, I just I just got to call it out because I know my, my, my good good best friend, J.D., there is a big Mike Scott fan. I, I do I mean, like Mike Scott. At, if you look at the tip of his nose, it's real brown right now. But Woo! I'm voting for Lee Bouchon. Hey, listen, so, you know, uh, you know why Mike it's Scott brown? Last week about, oh, he is a politician, and you, you elect him in office. Yes, we chose him to be sheriff to enforce the laws, not create new laws, not pass laws, to enforce laws. What so laws Mike did he Scott create, Paul? Lost in eight years, Mike Scott has totally lost his way and turned into the pompous, arrogant person that he is out there endorsing like he's some superstar rock star. He should be a sheriff and, and do his job. You should That's know, Paul. Tell him. Shop. Tell him, Paul. Paul what, laws did he, what laws did he create? No, he's not supposed to create any laws. Oh. Mike Scott's supposed to be a sheriff. He's I got supposed you. to oversee the sheriff's department, run a budget, create a budget, take care of our sheriff's department. Not out there endorsing Sarah Palin, endorsing Dane Eagle. Have you seen Sarah Palin? Who's crooked as his father, Greg Eagle. Dane Eagle. I guy. thought Dane Eagle's a nice guy, ain't he? Oh, no, Who? not again. Dane Eagle's a nice guy, ain't he? I went to his dad last night at, the, at Oktoberfest, and I told his dad off. I said, hey, Greg, you're a piece of crap. <laughs> I mean, I told Tell him, him how you really feel, Paul. Don't hold back. <laughs> I think you ought to run for office next year, Paul. Lee Bouchon for sheriff. Remember that. Lee Bouchon for sheriff. Paul Barnes for council. Paul Paul Barnes for city council. See you, Paul. Take care, man. See ya. God. Yeah, that, you love it. I love it. I got. I actually, I, real quick, we got one of Smitty's friends on the line. This is uh, who? This is Peter from Orlando, line three. Peter loves Smitty. Know. I don't even know him. Peter, you're on the Ledge Radio Show with JD and Smitty. Hey. Okay. Uh, I just want to ask uh, JD a question. Uh, if Romney was uh, Mr. Romney was such a great governor of Massachusetts, how come he didn't run for a second term? I don't know, buddy. Why didn't he? Yeah, well, I know because okay. I'm from Massachusetts. Ooh. I'm sorry, it's a good place to be from. In your face! In your face! We were 47. That's, I'd move from there creation. too if I was you. That's his big. That's one of his biggest lies. And our roads were a joke. They were a big joke. That's the right. potholes we used to call sure. Romney wreckers. Nice. So you know, he, yeah. and all the polls. Oh, absolutely. Stated that he was going to get beat, and that would not look very good for his presidential run. So, no, so basi basically you're saying he you messed know, it all up. Term, you know, sitting governors usually are a shoe in for a second term. Well, I'll tell you so what. He, he was so bad. Here's, a, here's a quick he question. He didn't even try to he quit. Hey, hey, sit, hey Peter, sitting, hang on one second, Peter, buddy. We got Byron Donald here who wants to ask you hey, a question. Hey, Peter, is a no. sitting president a shoe in for a second term? Don't look that no, way. Why, right didn't he, why didn't he run for a second term if he was such a good governor? Well, what does it matter? Who cares? What does it matter? Everyone, if you're Who a cares? Good governor, maybe he term limited himself. Let's check this out. That's why it matters. It's 2012. It's 2012. We're 16 trillion dollars in debt because he, ma he made the mess. Oh, no, is what he's no, saying. No, no, he made no, the no, mess no. and then he left. Mitt Romney made the mess and then he left in Boston. Mitt Romney gave us what he's saying. What he's saying. Oh, He's talking about Mitt Romney. How'd you like that health care up there, Peter? He didn't run for a second term. That's my question. I want you to ask your, you know, your vote, your read, uh, your Peter. listeners to think about that. Peter. Well, is it is it is it possible? Well, what? What? Is it possible? What is it is it possible that he didn't run for a second term because most of Massachusetts is liberal? Democrat. No, no. Why the first term got in. He got in. Massachusetts will give anybody a chance, my friend. Oh, okay. They'll give them a chance anybody, now. They're so liberal, they will give anybody a chance. But if you turn out to be a phony, they will. They're pretty smart. They will kick you. The guy. The guy. You know? The guy was able to pass laws with eighty-seven percent of his of his uh, house as being Democrat. Come they, on. Why didn't he run for a second term? Hey, maybe because it was Massachusetts and it sucks. <laughs> Well, I'm talking about Massachusetts is a smart, a smart voters. They know Peter, quick when question. they see it. They do, huh? Peter, quick question for you. That's yeah, why you're down in Orlando now. They felt duped by Romney, and Romney's going to dupe, trying to dupe the whole nation. I would have moved out of Massachusetts, too, if I was you. Well, you know, one thing good about Romney, if you don't like his position, give him next week. He'll change it. It doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. It's all words anyways. Words don't, words yeah. don't mean for First he's for Romney. something, then he's not for something, then he is, then he's sort of kind of... You never know what he's doing, man. Peter, who are you voting for? He's got no deeds. Peter. No words. You know, it's like the drunken on posture. We're, oh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. Hey Peter, who are you gonna vote for? Who are you voting for? <laughs> I ain't gonna vote are you a Gary for Johnson me. fan? Are you Gary Ron Johnson? Ron Paul. Ron Paul. He's out. He's out. I'm Gary voting for Ron Paul. Well, he probably would. Hey yeah, Peter, Ron we. Ron Paul. Uh, he's something from the dark ages. States rights. <laughs> Let's go back to integration. I mean segregation. You know, I was. I don't think that has anything to do with it. What are you talking about, Peter? Well, Ron Paul wants states' rights, don't he? That doesn't mean segregation. 
Well, that's the That's what'll happen. Oh, it will. That's what he's saying. We'll segregate. That's what he's saying. In today's day and age, we're going to segregate. That's what he's saying. You know, that's what Peter's saying. what the result of states' rights That tells you who we're, who we're up against here. It's segregate. And if you take it a little further, it's slavery. Hey, Peter, do you know what the, do you know what the results of centralized power was? I mean, do we want to go hey, back into the dark ages? Do we want to run for a second term? Do we want to relitigate the Enlightenment period? I mean, do we want to talk about why there are separation of powers and state rights in our federal system, or do we just want to talk about segregation in the fact that oh, Mitt Romney only ran for one term? Why you didn't run for a second term? It's very unusual. Right. Hey, Peter, we appreciate the call, buddy. Hey, Pete, uh, Pete. my Peter. brother, thank you for calling, Pete. Peter, love keep, it. Keep love listening, it. man. We, we love it. Hey, think about it. We didn't Ask your, court, ask your listeners. Go to, go to, go to the we'll webpage and, and make sure you tell J.D. Wall what you're thinking, my friend. 277-9600 or 775-9600. If you have something to say, give us a call. Yeah, listen, uh, we'll be right back. We're gonna, we got a, a special guest in the studio with us, uh, state rep. Is a state house rep? Matt Hudson, District 80. And, uh, when we get right back, uh, we'll, we'll talk to him a little bit about what's going on in the state. 96 K Rock supports Southwest Florida's bikers with the Biker Map. Hey, this is Chris from the Biker Map. The Biker Map is in over 500 locations, and if you can't find it, just go to thebikermap.com. The Biker Map. Grab a copy by stopping by K Rock Broadcasts and always at the K Rock Studios in Estero. I just want to say thank you to Southwest Florida and all the advertisers for supporting all the motorcycle riders out there. The Biker Map. And be sure to be on the lookout for the all new The Boater Map from 96 K Rock and 96krock.com. Hi, I'm Matt Miller. Would you like to help to restore the American dream, own a home, and be able to provide for your family? Then vote for me so we can make a difference. Restore our economic future. Vote Matt Miller, November 6th. Let's take back our country. I am Matt Miller, a fair and responsible choice. Political party advertisement paid for and approved by Matt Miller, Independence Party, for Lee County Commissioner. Securing your family, your business, your property. That's what's important in your world. No matter how big, no matter how small, secure your world with Imperial Fire Alarm and Security today. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security is a local company with hometown service the way it should be. One call to Imperial will align you with the most effective fire alarm security and surveillance systems as well as state-of-the-art wireless monitoring. If you're a property manager or condo association member, ask about Imperial's wireless monitoring systems to replace costly and unreliable phone lines and save your community thousands from individual homes to large communities. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security can secure your world. Don't you think it's time to secure your world? Imperial Fire Alarm and Security services Lee, Charlotte, and Collier County. Learn more at imperialfiresecurity.com or to schedule your free consultation, call 239-288-6482. Secure your world at imperialfiresecurity.com. License number EF200046. Southwest Florida knows that Duncan's Diamonds has the best prices, but it's their quality, selection, and excellent customer service that keeps customers coming back year after year. And Duncan's Diamonds customers have great things to say. Their sales team is extremely helpful and knowledgeable. I shopped at other jewelry stores, <laughs> but there's no place like Duncan's Duncan's Diamonds. And I tell all my friends to come here every chance I get. At Duncan's Diamonds, I found everything I was looking for. Great designers. I was awfully impressed with their hearts on fire diamonds and jewelry. You know, they're really amazing. The customer service is excellent. You know, you're free to take your time and browse without being hassled, and all your questions are answered. I've been to every chain jewelry store, department store, and independently owned stores. None of them beat Duncan's Diamonds prices. They are the best. I had some jewelry to sell, and by far, Duncan's Diamonds paid me the most cash and paid on the spot. Duncan's Diamonds put your mind at ease. Best quality at the best price. Discover Duncan's Diamonds, Fort Myers on US 41, and in the Gulf Coast Town Center, where you'll find the largest selection at the best prices in Southwest Florida. The nicest used cars anywhere in the country are right here in Naples, and they're all on NaplesUsedCars.com. Hundreds of extra clean, low mileage used cars at a fraction of their original. Prices, all makes, all models. Are you in need of a quality luxury vehicle? Then NaplesUsedCars.com is your one-stop shop with BMW 3 Series starting at just thirteen nine ninety, a Mercedes-Benz SLK Roadster for only sixteen nine ninety, and a Jaguar XK8 on sale right now for eighteen nine ninety. Plus, at NaplesUsedCars.com, you will find hundreds of quality pre-owned cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs from Toyota, Honda, Dodge, Hyundai, Nissan, Chevrolet, and more, all on clear for a very limited time only. Browse at your own pace 24 hours a day. Get your trade value, your interest rate, your down payment, your monthly payment. Even fill out your credit app online. Plus, we'll buy your car even if you don't buy one of ours. Visit NaplesUsedCars.com. That's NaplesUsedCars.com. Plus, tax, tag, and title fee sponsored by Jermaine. 
Honey, are you ready yet? I don't want to spend all day shopping for a new car. What makes you think it's going to take all day? Well, there's at least a dozen car dealers around here. We don't need to drive all over town. Last night while you were sleeping through the football game, I was shopping at VictoryLaneChevrolet.com. Really? Do they have any new Camaros? More than anyone else. But we're looking for a crossover like the Equinox or maybe one of those cute new Chevy Sparks. They get up to 38 miles per gallon EPA highway and we can get one in my favorite color, pink. Victory Lane Chevy, huh? That's at the corner of Fowler and Winkler, isn't it? Yes, dear. Let's go. All right. But I'm still going to sit in the new Camaro. Sit in anything you like. I'll let you know when I picked out our new Victory Lane Chevy. By the way, I wasn't sleeping. Sure you weren't. You're always a winner at Victory Lane Chevrolet. Victory Lane Chevrolet. That's L-A-Y-N-T. Southwest Florida knows that Duncan's Diamonds has the best prices, but it's their quality, selection, and excellent customer service that keeps customers coming back year after year. And Duncan's Diamonds customers have great things to say. Their sales team is extremely helpful and knowledgeable. I shopped at other jewelry stores, but there's no place like Duncan's Diamonds. And I tell all my friends to come here every chance I get. At Duncan's Diamonds, I found everything I was looking for. Great designers. I was awfully impressed with their hearts on fire, diamonds, and jewelry. You know, they're really amazing. The customer service is excellent. You know, you're free to take your time and browse without being hassled, and all your questions are answered. I've been to every chain jewelry store, department store, and independently owned stores. None of them beat Duncan's Diamonds prices. They are the best. I had some jewelry to sell, and by far, Duncan's Diamonds paid me the most cash and paid on the spot. Duncan's Diamonds puts your mind at ease. Best quality at the best price. Discover Duncan's Diamonds, Fort Myers on US 41, and in the Gulf Coast Town Center, where you'll find the largest selection at the best prices in Southwest Florida. Unfiltered, unbridled opinions and giving Southwest Florida a voice. It's the Ledge Radio Show with J.D. and Smitty on 96K Rock. Talk that rocks. Talk that rocks. Welcome back. The phone numbers are 239-277-9600 or 775-9600. You can check out our live stream at theledgeradioshow.com. You can also find us at facebook.com forward slash theledgeradioshow. Uh, with us uh, in this segment, and I think we're going to carry over to the next segment since we've uh, kept him here long enough without giving him any airtime, is uh, District 80 State uh, House Rep Matt Hudson. Uh, Matt, thanks for being with us, buddy. Hey, great to be with you and uh, Smitty. You got it, man. And we've got well, we got to give him the official back in the house. There you go, man. That, that's Smitty's that, official that, clap. That was a clap. That was kind of troubling, actually, to be here and watch that live. <laughs> hey, I wore my pink for you. What do you want? Come uh, on. Th- don't think that didn't go unnoticed. It's, it's for the cure. Hey, Matt, before we get into the the heated uh, some of the heated stuff here. Oh, never mind. Our, our caller hung up. I guess he got a... Chicken? Yeah, he, he, chick- he chickened out with you in here. Oh. He couldn't hang with the big dogs. It happens. All right, I, so, I do it every weekend, you know. So here's so here's the deal. So we got the general election coming up. What is it? November 6th? Yes, sir. November, November 6th. 6th. Early voting, isn't it? Is it? Are we no early voting yet? Or we're not? not in early voting yet. That it's, uh, it's coming up it's very the, soon. It yeah. starts the thirteenth day before the election. Yep. Stops the third day before the election. Correct. So, correct. So get out early and get your votes. Vote early and often. Get your groove on. Yeah. Now, District eighty. Where is District eighty at? What is that? What kind of a land area does that encompass? It's an enormous uh, chunk of Florida. It extends basically the eastern part of Collier County, everything east of I-75, north of Alligator Alley. Uh, includes the communities of Golden Gate Estates, Ave Maria, Mockley, hmm. and then includes all of Hendry County, so Felda, so La Belle, La Belle and yeah. Cluiston. So it's mostly swampland. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. It's, it's the prime agricultural it land. Is. Oh, that's Seriously. what I meant to say. I'm sorry, man. I, mean, I got, I got a family handful out of people. There. It's always how you deliver. I know, I, man. I'm I got, sorry. I got family out there, too. Absolutely. Out Bet you do. <laughs> no, that's awesome, man. I know. I know that they know all about this drink I got here today. This apple pie. That's apple pie I drink. Is after you up, bring up all him. Up on him. <laughs> you see how Smitty is. He's from up north. What do you expect? There's just something wrong with it. He, he's from up north. Take he a drink of that. It. You'll be just like him. <laughs> <laughs> well, so anyway, so what's the, now? What is the just for the folks that are out there that don't know? You know, we've had guys on, uh, you know, we had uh, Albashan on early on, bef- you know, before the primary. And, mm-hmm. uh, but of course, he was talking more so about Congress and, and what he was running for. Um, for the folks out there who don't know, what, is a, what does a state house rep do? What do they do for the state of Florida? Well, the Florida legislature has uh, two chambers, the Senate and the House. There's 120 legislators, 40 state senators, and we make the laws in Florida that you get to live by. Um, our number one and only priority. So you're the- to blame. 
Um, no, you're mostly to learn. <laughs> exactly. Uh, our number one mandate in the Constitution is that we have to balance the budget, and we do that every year. Every, anything else wait, wait, we do mean, outside You mean that. the state of Florida has to balance a budget? Not only do we have to balance a budget, but we have to put adequate reserves aside because we're a hurricane-prone state. And so a year ago, when the federal uh, debt rating was downgraded, uh, Florida's uh, debt rating was upgraded. Really? Yep. So we have to balance a budget in our state. Yes, sir. But they don't have to do it at the federal level. Uh, no, that would be correct. <clears throat> that's that's uh, they that's should do it. Yeah, that would probably be a good idea. Wouldn't it, it? It'd, it'd be a goal. Kind of know think, what yeah. you were gonna, what you were thinking about spending, and then to actually see if your spending came in it's, on target. It's, it's kind of like you: three for you, one for me; four for you, one for me; five for you, one for me. Hey, that's man, how you're it is. The owner, you can do that. You know, that's, you what, know? that's what being an owner is all about. <laughs> I hear you. The, the reality is, government should be no different than uh, people uh, in their own family life. Absolutely. You don't you don't sp- pay your mortgage with your credit card, and you don't sit there and spend more money than you take in. It's just, it's not a t- it's just not tricky. I mean, it's simple math. It is. Simple math. And, and speaking of that, now, your specific, you were uh, talking uh, earlier before the show about uh, one of the committees that you're on, and, and you actually write some of the, write some or if not a, a, a big portion of the, uh, just explain to the folks, uh, you were talking about the medical, all, all that good stuff. Sure. Um, my role in the Florida legislature the last two years has been that I am the chair chairman of health care appropriations uh, and in that role uh, I oversee the creation of the house's budget uh, relating to health care in Florida what that equates to is 43 percent of our total spending in Florida is devoted to health care related issues uh, in dollars that's 30 billion our total budget is 70 billion in Florida and I write a budget of about 43 percent of that no kidding 43 percent is dedicated to, to medical yep what you know that that actually sounds uh, and that on the average for most most well, no, well, remember, States? Florida has a lot of retirees, so we're going to have a lot of medical from retirees as well. So it could be it could be a little different. Um, it's got to be different per per state. It is it is different per state, uh, and obviously, you know, our state is disproportionately uh, one of the large states. Obviously, is the fourth largest state, soon to be the third largest state in the union. Um, Where do we rank with all the other states as far as that? Um, we uh, we rank pretty high. Soon in to terms be the of, third largest. What that. are we growing our our, our size? Are we we picking we, up Georgia or something? Uh, no, uh, <laughs> we've 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 thought about that. Okay. Uh, you know, we've got an open border, and we're ready with the national guard anytime. Okay. But um, the reality. The reality is that so many people are moving from the uh, Rust Belt states yeah. and moving from the states where, quite frankly, they're not creating jobs, and so they are moving to Florida where there's more opportunity. I'd rather take Alabama. they got a better football team. We could use them. <laughs> <laughs> better than better than Georgia, anyway. Well, we're, we're going to switch places with New York is what will happen. So they'll, well, be, they'll be four. We'll be number three. Oh, okay. As far as with, with population and, and – mm-hmm. okay, I got you. Well, you know why? Because all of them are moving down here because their taxes are so high. Exactly and right. It's, and it's cold as, you know what, BG yeah, just – cold up there. Yeah, there's very little sho- snow shoveling here. Well, so. to, to equate the, um, the 43% of our budget going to medical, Byron, maybe you'll know this, um, how does that uh, counter with, say, the federal budget when it comes to, to the health care costs? Do you know what the approximate percentage is on – at the federal yeah, level, because it's got to be up there, right? Well, with respect to Medicare, Medicaid, I mean, you're talking almost maybe 47 percent of the federal budget is with Medicare, and then the Medicaid, uh, I'll call it redistribution, uh, with their collection of it back down to the states. So okay, that's about that. Yeah, Med- that. Medicaid is our single largest expense in the state government. Um, for every dollar that uh, your your state government spends, 28 cents out of every dollar is on Medicaid. Okay. One out of every six of your fellow Floridians is in Medicaid. And Medicaid is a state and federal partnership where we pay a portion, they pay a portion. Do you know what, um, the, what, the, what the portion is? Uh, is there a, a certain percentage? It's a, it's a very odd formula, but effectively they give us about 56.83 cents on every dollar. Okay. Mm. okay. So, yes, I do happen to know that number. But uh, it, is a, it is a huge program that, uh, you know, a corp- incorporates a great deal of our budget. The other 15 cents out of the 43 cents on the dollar that we spend in health care would include your Departments of Health, uh, the Department of Children and Families, Agency for Persons with Disabilities, Florida Department of uh, Veterans Affairs, and the uh, uh, Department of Elder Affairs. When, when Obamacare is fully implemented, uh, if things move forward, you know, just on the current path, what kind of uh, effect might that have on our state's budget when it comes to medical expenses? Well, it's it's significant to say the least. Our the econon, economic uh, advisory council for the state that puts together projections basically says that, you know, we've got about 3.4 million people in the program now. We should expect to see somewhere around 4.9 million people in the program. Okay. So if you figure 28 cents on the dollar is covering 3.4 million people, you can start to do the math to see where we're at. Uh, there is. Uh, theoretically, so it's, it's, it's going to be increased exponentially yeah. to cover the the additional the, the additional insured 
uh, for lack of a better term, mm-hmm. that means that we can spend less money on other things. Well, exactly right. You know, we we only can spend what the citizens send us, and quite frankly, we should spend less than that, and we do. And so the reality is, if we we need to find an additional, you know, one and a half, two billion dollars, or ten billion dollars more uh, potentially of revenue, um, there's only one way to do that. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And it's a scenario that none of us want, which is raise taxes. You bet you, and I'll not. Some, some and I can tell you, I won't do that. that. What's um now? Obviously, and that's going to be a real tough sell, especially when, you know, in general, I mean, you know, we've got we've got uh, you know Republican-led uh, House. I mean, so those guys they don't want to raise taxes. They know what that would do to their you know, potential job you know, to keep them you know employed at the at the you know state house level. Well, it's I mean. It's a very simple equation. You can't tax people that are unemployed. True. You can't tax people uh, and expect to get more take, revenue from that. Can we take some time? You don't tax take... yourself to prosperity. That's not how it works in America. You work hard. You develop a business. You grow your business. You create jobs, and good things happen from yeah. there. Because the more people you put in the workforce, the more potential revenue you can collect from those additional employees. And you can keep the tax revenue at the same rate or lower. Um, if you lower it, then the, then the business has the opportunity to, to employ more folks, maybe make a, a little bit cheaper product that they can extend to their to their customers. And then when you when you, it's almost like a pyramid, the more the more folks um, you know that, that spread out in that pyramid, the, the the state or even the federal government has the ability to use those those additional tax revenues for their budgets. And when you raise taxes on the businesses, even in, at the state level, you get the opposite effect. Well, exactly. That's why in Florida we've lowered the corporate income tax rate. On the ballot this year, you see a measure that would double the uh, tangible personal property tax exemption to make sure that we are providing opportunities for small businesses to be able to grow. Uh, you've seen us uh, work very hard to not raise taxes, and we haven't, uh, to make sure we've balanced the budget. And that's why the state of Florida is one of the fastest creating job-creating states in the United States. We're in the top five. We are heading in the right direction from a lot of the good work that we've done uh, in, the, in the state house. Well, I'll tell you what. It wouldn't have, wouldn't have to be do, do anything with Obama helping out or anything, would it? Absolutely not, because no. we refused all his money. Oh, okay. There you go. But thanks for asking. <laughs> hey, when Absolutely. we get back, we got a hard break coming up at the top of the hour. When we get back, we're going to have uh, more with uh, uh, Matt Hudson from District 80, uh, state house rep. Um, then we'll have another special guest coming after him, and I'll tell you about that when we come back. Uh, so we'll be back in just a few moments. Listen to 96K Rock to win a pair of tickets for the 27th Annual German American Club of Cape Coral's Oktoberfest. Tons of delicious beer, food, beer, nonstop live music, beer, carnival games and rides for the kids, plus beer. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the last two weekends of October at the German American Social Club of Cape Coral. Visit 96krock.com for more information. Are you tired of the same old wasteful spending of our tax dollars? Are you tired of seeing large parts of our county undeveloped with no jobs for our communities? Are you tired of career politicians that promise to represent you and then turn their focus on special interests and the few? Then vote your conscience. Vote Matt Miller for Lee County Commissioner. I am Matt Miller, a fair and responsible choice. Political party advertisement paid for and approved by Matt Miller, Independence Party, the Lee County Commissioner. Securing your family, your business, your property. That's what's important in your world. No matter how big, no matter how small, secure your world with Imperial Fire Alarm and Security today. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security is a local company with hometown service the way it should be. One call to Imperial will align you with the most effective fire alarm security and surveillance systems as well as state-of-the-art wireless monitoring. If you're a property manager or condo association member, ask about Imperial's wireless monitoring systems to replace costly and unreliable phone lines and save your community thousands from individual homes to large communities. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security can secure your world. Don't you think it's time to secure your world? Imperial Fire Alarm and Security services Lee, Charlotte, and Collier counties. Learn more at imperialfiresecurity.com or to schedule your free consultation, call 239-288-6482. Secure your world at imperialfiresecurity.com. License number EF200046. Southwest Florida knows that Duncan's Diamonds has the best prices, but it's their quality, selection, and excellent customer service that keeps customers coming back year after year. And Duncan's Diamonds customers have great things to say. Their sales team is extremely helpful and knowledgeable. I've shopped at other jewelry stores, but there's no place like Duncan's Duncan's Diamonds. Then I tell all my friends to come here every chance I get. At Duncan's Diamonds, I found everything I was looking for. Great designers. I was awfully impressed with their hearts on fire diamonds and jewelry. 
You know, they're really amazing. The customer service is excellent. You know, you're free to take your time and browse without being hassled, and all your questions are answered. I've been to every chain jewelry store, department store, and independently owned stores. None of them beat Duncan's Diamonds prices. They are the best. I had some jewelry to sell, and by far, Duncan's Diamonds paid me the most cash and paid on the spot. Duncan's Diamonds puts your mind at ease. Best quality at the best price. Discover Duncan's Diamonds, Fort Myers on US-41, and in the Gulf Coast Town Center, where you'll find the largest selection at the best prices in southwest Florida. When it comes to landscaping, farming, or just cutting the grass, no one knows more than Matt Miller Track. They offer a huge selection of tractors and mowers for all your needs. Whether it's large commercial development or a small family project, they are your one-stop shop. Matt Miller Track is dedicated to providing their customers with the top-of-the-line products and services, all under one roof. Matt Miller takes great pride in his customer service, bringing top brands to you and offering best-of-industry warranties on all product lines. If you're looking for that one-of-a-kind maker model, they have all the top names. Snapper, Polar, King Cutter, Briggs & Stratton, and more. Sale, service. Service, repair, and maintenance for 20 years. Once you experience their down-home approach to business, you'll see why Matt Miller Tractor is second to none. They treat each customer like a neighbor, because that's what you are. Call Matt Miller Tractor at 239-693-0305. That's 239-693-0305. Or stop by the store at 7261 West State Road 80. She thinks my tractor's sexy. Two words you never hear together at lunch, quick and delicious. Unless, of course, you eat lunch at Boston's Restaurant and Sports Bar in Naples. Boston's prides itself on delicious lunches served fast for those on the go, and it's only $10, including beverage and tip. Happy hours every day from 3 to 7, and live music from Cloud 9 every Friday and Saturday night from 7 to 10. Featuring Direct TV in your home for the Big Ten. Boston's Restaurant and Sports Bar, located on 41 East Trail in the Sugden Park Plaza in Naples. You know, nobody even knows how I did that. I nobody did knows. They Is this knew where I, you tell me how you take no, the wand? Yeah, yeah but no, but I did that with the cars. Now what I did was, because of these TVs, yeah, I did. I pulled the same move. Okay. I took the money, I shipped it over to Japan, I took it over to the Canadian border, I bought it across, and then I went to Best Buy. I got a good deal, Caroline. You know why? I had to get a good deal. Because the initial number came to 500000 I cut it down to 285000 That's what it's costing us for these TVs, Caroline. We're giving flat screens, not big ones, huge ones, Caroline. Not these dinky donkey 19 inches. I, some guy did a promotion a couple months ago. He threw in these 19 or 17 inch TVs. My God, I'd be embarrassed to give somebody one of them, Caroline. I'm sorry, I stopped paying attention when you started doing math. Well, all I can tell you right now is that we got 40 inch flat screens right. for everyone that purchases here at Facillo Kia during the month of October. Everyone, Caroline. That's a number I can And understand. a chance to win 25000 Caroline. Oh, no purchase necessary. Come in and register. We'll make you all here in Southwest Florida. You. This Friday night, Yabo is proud to present a blues and soul performance from The Juice. Show starts at 10, so make sure you get there early to reserve your seat. Not only will there be great live entertainment, you can also enjoy some award-winning cuisine that only Yabo can offer. Yabo is located at 16230 Summerlin Road in Fort Myers. This Friday, don't miss out as The Juice rocks the stage only at Yabo. Every day, people go to work, and before the day is over, an on-the-job injury can alter their life forever. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. Unfortunately, these workers often find themselves in a fight for survival with their own employer's workers' compensation insurance carrier. Sometimes an injury takes seconds to occur. Others are caused by years of repetitive motion or exposure to hazardous chemicals or materials. But no matter how an injury occurs, the immediate need for lost wages and medical treatment begins at once. Most people live paycheck to paycheck, and any disruption in pay can upset a family's life. At Morgan & Morgan, we're proud of the work we do on behalf of the injured worker. Don't trust the insurance company to protect your family. Visit ForThePeople.com for answers to your questions concerning your legal rights, or call Morgan & Morgan at 1-800-MORGAN-LAW. Morgan & Morgan, for the people. Offices, Fort Myers and Naples. From the huge studios, WRXK, Bonita Springs, Naples, Fort Myers, a Beasley Broadcast Group Station, 96K Rock and 96KROCK.com. Talk that rocks. Get off the ledge! Get off the ledge! This country should have held. 
Brought to you by Duncan's Diamonds, your direct diamond importer. Straight off the ledge, it's J.D. and Smitty! Hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, phone lines are open 277-9600, or for the viewers around the world watching live streaming HD video on the ledge cam, 239-775-9600. You can visit our website and blog at theledgeradioshow.com. You can also give us a like at Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash ledgeradioshow. Uh, Smitty, um, you know, before we get into the into the meat of the, of the next segment, where do I go for all of my jewelry needs? Duncan's Diamonds in Fort Myers. That is where I go. That is where you go. I've shot many places, and and Duncan's Diamonds is easily twenty five to fifty percent below most, actually all other diamond jewelry stores. And they talk to you like you're an average guy if you don't know something about a diamond. And most of us don't. Yeah. You go in there, they'll educate you, they'll they'll steer you right and give you a fair shake. You got the round diamonds, you got the princess cut. That, that's all me, Princess Cut. <laughs> <laughs> the cotton candy cut. It's cotton candy cut. <laughs> princess Cut. I'm all about it, you baby. Know, and they'll also they'll also buy your old gold jewelry. And right now, with the, with the price I, of I'd gold, I'd bring some in if is, I had some. If, yeah, like, you know, if your watch wasn't a Bolex, you could bring that in too. <laughs> hey, yo, man, that's my, that's my thing. All right, <laughs> it's my bling. I know. Well, the next time you're looking for a quality diamond or amazing jewelry, go to Duncan's Diamonds. Tell them JD from the Ledge Radio Show uh, Radio Show sent you, and you won't be disappointed. Uh, I want to welcome back in studio with us uh, State House Rep. Matt Hudson, uh, representing District 80. Uh, we've also got uh, Byron Donalds in the studio with us, uh, along with Smitty. Who are you running against? I, I can't remember. Can't remember? <laughs> okay. That's He's crushing rule, it. Man. He's crushing it. He's crushing it. Smitty, that's the rule. You can't name your opponents. Okay. Then we, Fair we learned, and balanced. We learned that. We're not Fox News. And learned that by Fox <laughs> News, right? <laughs> we um, No, we learned that last hour. You know, you, you, Actually, last week uh, when the sheriff was in, you know, you don't... Uh, Lytle, isn't it? Oh, here we go. Yeah, Lytle. Uh, that'd be the editor from the Naples Daily News. No, I'm, not, I'm not running against him. I'm Look not, at Smitty. not sure where your research is. I'm, I'm going to find it's out. It's Wikipedia, believe I'm going to find it's out Smitty, right now. Smitty All right, Byron, I know you got some questions uh, for, for Matt, uh, so let, let's get on to the uh, to the heart of it. Let's find out what has Matt done, what's Matt going to do if he's elected for the next term. No, absolutely. Those are all great things. A couple things, because we were talking about Medicaid in the last segment. Um Number, question um, number one, what kind of reforms have come through the state legislature the last couple of years to reform that program because it is a, such a large portion of the state's budget? And number two, what are some of the impacts Obamacare has on Medicaid? Because that's important. Did I say Medicare? Medicaid, I'm sorry. What are some of the impacts Obamacare has on Medicaid in the state of Florida? Well, that's a great question. And, and in Florida, we've taken a very proactive approach uh, to reforming our Medicaid program. You know, if you have any type of a health care program, it should actually provide good health. That should be the ultimate outcome that you're trying to achieve is for people to be healthy. Uh, and it doesn't matter if it's a regular insurance, you're paying by cash, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is you want to be healthy. And so we've created a system in Florida where it is pro-patient, where it is pro-taxpayer, where the patient actually gets to make a choice in Medicaid of uh, who provides their services for them. And we provide for uh, incentives for people to be more innovative and come up with quality measures that, that, that hold um, the providers accountable to actually give good health care, while at the same time providing the taxpayer a great bang for the buck. And all that sounds wonderful, and we passed it, and unfortunately we're waiting on the federal government to approve it because the state and the feds are in a partnership when it comes to Medicaid. So we've been waiting over a year for the federal government to uh, uh, sign off on a program that would literally save the state billions of dollars, and yet they have not done that. Um, the effects uh, overall of the uh, Affordable Care Act on, on the state of Florida when it comes to Medicaid eligibles, um, you would expand the eligibility tremendously and there would be uh, no compensation uh, for those that were already existing into the program, and there would be a huge burden put on the state of Florida financially to be able to cover those new individuals that are in the mm -hmm. program. Now, again, if, if they would approve our reform project, it would put us in a best, much better position. So strangely, while they're advocating for um, their program, uh, we've tried to come up with a program that would um, um, 
be beneficial to Floridian taxpayers, regardless of what happens to the uh, Affordable Care Act one way or another, whether you like it or whether you hate it, at the end of the day, we've got, uh, we've got a system that we need to make better. And we've tried to work with our federal partners, and they've been unwilling to do so. Matt, why would you say that they, uh, what, what's taken them a year to do this? I mean, what's the, yeah. what's, have they given you a reason behind this? Uh, they gave us a little bit of feedback, and we fixed the things that they wanted uh, fixed and um, exactly how they wanted it, actually, and they still haven't approved it. So uh, I've got to believe that either they um, are not actually committed to uh, good pro-taxpayer, pro-patient reforms, or um, they're just... Uh, or they're just inept and they don't know how to do it. You said it. Is I, there, I will say it. Is there a hang-up a change in how we're going to pay, how uh, the, the instead of changing it from, I know Medicare is fee-for-service, is that what Medicaid is uh, traditionally? Is, is that their hang-up? Um, no, because it's been done in other states. Mm-hmm. So what we did is we looked at recognizing that we're a large state. We went around the country and looked at what worked in other states. Rather than reinventing the wheel and sure. spending a lot of money to do it, so, well, if that worked there and that worked there, let's try that. If that didn't work, let's not even go down is, that is path. It possible so, that, is it possible that they're, they're and I'm just speculating here, that because we've got Rick Scott and we know that the president doesn't like Rick Scott, um, that Rick Scott turned down a bunch of Obama uh, money, is it possible they're just going, well, shoot, if you're not going to take our money, we're just not going not to help you guys out? Well, I don't know if it's uh, got anything to do with our governor, but I will say that they probably had a little angst over the fact that we were the lead state in the uh, lawsuit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and I'm and I'm pretty sure that they had our our name on a post-it note above the desk, the person <laughs> that had to sign off. And whenever our file got to the top, it probably went to the bottom again. Um, but but that's over. But that's over. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, that that's been resolved, uh, not to my liking, but it's been resolved. And so, there's really no reason why um, it should should be sitting on the on the back bench. And the other thing I will say is this, you know, forget the Affordable Care Act. We're talking about the existing program. Why, if you are a a federal government recognizing you are a cost-sharing arrangement, why would you not want to save dollars and improve patient outcomes? There's no logical reason not to do that. Well, there's a logic for that, but we'll get to that later. Let's talk about you. (laughs) Oh, by the way, you can call it Obamacare. Obama said that. He likes that name. He does like that name. You call it Obamacare. That's okay. What's on your What's on your mind for the, for your next term? What What are some of the things you want to get done in the Florida House the next two years? Well, obviously, we're going to be very focused on the budget, and it's all about uh, job creation. And as far as I'm concerned, um, government should do less with less. Right. And we've got to make sure that we're getting out of the way of people that want to create jobs. Government doesn't create jobs. And so we're going to be very committed to repealing more rules and regulations. We've already repealed over a 1,000 of them in the last two years, getting those kinds of cumbersome things out of the way. And I'll give you a perfect example. Um, one of the fastest-growing segments in the state's economy is uh, medical device manufacturing, you know, the gizmos they use on you when you're doing surgery and things like that. And they go through a very rigorous FDA process, which they should because they're putting something inside you for Pete's sake. I mean, you, you'd want to make sure that they were Sounds attention. like a good idea. Seems like yeah. a reasonable idea, right? And lo and behold, Florida had an exact, almost duplicative to the word process in the state of Florida for a manufacturer to have to do. Mm-hmm. Well, why have that? If you're going through the FDA why be process redundant? Yeah. and it's the exact same thing, so I actually passed a, a measure that would remove that. Mm-hmm. And as a result, now we're more competitive with other states, and that's growing our segment of the economy. So it's wow. looking at things like that that we can say, hey, how do we compete with other states and have people want to attract business to our state? That'll be our first and foremost goal focused on that. I also want to be very focused on looking at um, uh, agricultural concerns. My district is very much an yeah, agricultural district. Uh, we uh, produce about 11% of the nation's sugar. We also have more citrus trees in Hendry County than any other st- uh, county in the state. And so making sure that we have viable markets for our products to be shipped uh, around the world and around the country is extremely important to me. You know, well. What's the name of your opponent again? Um, I, can't, I can't, remember. can't remember off the top oh, of my okay. head. I'm just checking. Yeah. Hey, Matt, you know, speaking of Matt's, uh, uh, we actually had Matt Caldwell in a few weeks ago. Uh, he was in here uh, working with us on a project, and uh, he mentioned that um, that there's, uh, there's, there's something that they're trying to put together for the next uh, legislative term uh, to maybe do some revisions to the sales tax. Have you heard anything about that when it refer, as it refers to business? Um, as a business owner, and you've got a... Um, especially in the service industry, if you've got uh, sales tax on certain types of industries, um, you know that that they have to charge ser- they have to charge tax on certain services, but not others. And it, it's kind of, it's it's really convoluted. It's hard to understand. He said uh, he kind of left me with, "Hey, don't worry. The, you know, we're working on something for this next term. Um, you know, it should be a big, you know, some kind of big change." Do you know anything about what he's talking about by chance? Well, I can tell you that we are constantly reviewing the tax code to be able to find different ways to eliminate taxes. 
uh, to streamline taxes and get uh, less taxes into uh, uh, government's hands and more money back into the people's hands. Uh, Representative Caldwell uh, has not shared with me his particular plan, okay. but uh, I have every confidence in Representative Caldwell because he is a, a, a sharp guy and represents Lee County well, that he's coming up with a good plan, I'm sure. Okay, well, we'll hope so. And I would certainly look forward to working with him on it, that's for sure, because, uh, frankly, we just don't uh, we just don't need that much money. Hey, Smitty. What are you doing? Are you sleeping? No, I'm just I'm just listening to the guys talk, man. Talk I thought about... you were over there surfing porn no, or something. No, 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 no. <laughs> saw you Boy, texting. I, no, 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 I hope no. not. My he's he's no. over there reloading. No, no. man. He was watching Obama's no. performance in the first debate. He was taking notes. <laughs> who, who, do you think he won the first debate? Obama? Who? Yeah, do you think he won the first debate? The first debate. <laughs> yeah, I'm asking you a question. Do you think he won? Why is that even a question? I, um, you say, obviously, you think he didn't, right? Romney okay. stole so, so, that. So, so, so if Romney won the first, uh, Romney won the first debate, of course. okay, in the second debate, you think he did just as good as the first debate? Did Romney do yeah. just as good? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he did? Yeah. You must have been watching another one because I didn't see that at Listen, all. Listen, hold on real quick. Because I, I, I saw Romney, I saw Romney debate. try to muscle up and he got schooled by the president. So that's how I saw it. I don't know what debate he was watching. You remember that thing? You remember that fifth question? I think there were the, teeth uh, can actually knock that out of Romney's no, 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 mouth because no, 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 he got no, no, hit no. so hard. Listen, you remember that listen. one question where the fifth, where the the you know the black gentleman asked the president, "Hey, you know, I voted for you. Why should I vote for you again?" Sure. I'm not feeling enthused. Right. And Obama stummed and stammered and ummed and odd. And then Romney came out and gave one of the cleanest eviscerations of the president's platform over the last four years. I mean, he took him apart. Piece spell by piece. spell that evisceration. Spell it. E V. I'm watching your pink shirt. It's distracting me. Anyway. E V. Evisceration. Evisceration. <laughs> I thought it was too. I mean, you know, for me, I thought I, it was a better debate, and I thought, I and, I, and, and I thought that uh, I did Ron, not because thought, you had a, you had a, you had a, a liberal moderator I, who was who was clearly two to one against know, what, Romney. Look, look, I'm I'm in the middle. I think that there was give credit where credit's due. Romney Romney did a very good job the first debate, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I think the second debate, I think it, it brought up the thing, and I thought well, I thought here, he did here's well. What, here's what I here's what I questioned: How did Obama know that Candy Crowley? Had the transcript from the Rose Garden speech on her desk. Well, she's got when, a... when this is supposed to be a neutral moderator, how did he know she had the transcript? And then on top of it, she read it wrong. She used the wrong. Well, regardless, it was, in, it was, it was not regardless correct. of what he said was what he he was correct in what he said. He did say that exactly. So yeah, but you're, he, you he can said mince words. You can mince words over all this stuff. The fact is, he said what he said was correct. And he, and when Romney thought he had a moment nope. to strike to close the I, deal, bam, he, he stepped Rom right in Romney it, and, and he was out the door. I know what you think, Matt. What do you think about this? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, we don't care, Matt. We'll take a break right now. <laughs> 9600, nice try. Nobody's listening. Hey, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? As far as I'm concerned, uh, the president can't win a debate if you don't answer any questions mm -hmm. and well, uh he didn't answer any well, questions how, how do you how you do know, you debate if you don't somebody answer the question on libya let me play the clip real you know, quick let me play something for you we, look, we have a little look, clip i want i want to get your take lost, on this we lost three embassies in 72 hours and we lost an ambassador I'll, I'll, that was tortured and killed i got you that know what? he didn't answer that question to anybody's satisfaction and frankly uh, put us in a bad listen, position on the world listen, stage listen to it was embarrassing debate. listen to this listen to this tell me what your thought is on this and i want to ask you because just the other day on the campaign trail you talked about that you scolded mitt romney this is uh, his friends who are running this super pack that funded guy. that and you said of mitt romney Somebody who will lie to you to get to be president will lie to you when they are president. I have to ask you, are you calling Mitt Romney a liar? Yes. You're calling Mitt Romney a liar? Well, you seem shocked by it. I, I, yes. I mean, what, what Why else are you, you saying say? he's a liar? The, 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 this is a man whose staff created the PAC. His millionaire friends fund the PAC. He pretends he has nothing to do with the PAC. It's baloney. He's not telling the American people the truth. I remember this. It's, it's like his pretense that he's a conservative. I just think he ought to be honest with the American people and try to win as the real Mitt Romney, not try to invent a poll-driven, consultant-guided uh, version that goes around with talking points. And I think he ought to be candid. I, do, I don't think he's being candid. And that'll be a major issue I mean, he, from here on out for the rest of this campaign. That's, that, so, that, that's so what, what I'm talking about say the is, Rose Garden speech, and he brings up Newt Gingrich well, during the primary. What I'm saying is the guy is going to lie. The guy is going to lie. Romney's been lying for a long time, and, and your own GOP, Grant Gingrich, who you like, you said he was the smartest guy in, in the race. He was the smartest guy in the room. And you said smartest guy in the room. So here's a guy who says that he blatantly just lies. And All that's, right, well, that's here's, the whole thing. Here's the deal. Look, he flip-flops. Look here, Smitty. We're coming up on a hard break. I want to thank uh, State, State House Rep Matt Hudson for coming in today, uh, for putting up with you and your... Uh, Wow, wow, wow.
Well, I would I would just say thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for the listeners for for being engaged and and it was a very good conversation. I would just throw a shameless plug out. Please if you do want to it. know more about me, please go to my website, votefromatthudson.com. Or you can find me on Facebook at Rep Matt Hudson or follow me on Twitter at M Hudson 101. Absolutely. But uh, I appreciate your time and I appreciate you allowing me to be on and for the uh, great discussion, even though the guy in pink doesn't have a clue. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, while, you're, while you're looking up Matt Hudson, uh, look for the guy who's running against Hill, okay? <laughs> All right, everybody, we'll be right back. <laughs> See you. The world has witnessed the roast of Charlie Sheen, David Hasselhoff, Flavor Flav, and more Thursday night, October 25th, 96 K Rock. Heads and Another one to the list. It's the roast of Zito and Garrett. These guys practiced and got really good at sucking. At Off the Hook Comedy Club on Marco Island with Roastmaster Rich Voss. Who's this douche? To purchase tickets to this one night only event, visit 96krock.com, offthehookcomedy.com, or call 389 6900. It's the roast of Zito and Garrett, 96K Rock. Hi, I'm Matt Miller. Would you like to help to restore the American dream, own a home, and be able to provide for your family? Then vote for me so we can make a difference. Restore our economic future. Vote Matt Miller, November 6th. Let's take back our country. I am Matt Miller, a fair and responsible choice. Political party advertisement paid for and approved by Matt Miller, Independence Party, for Lee County Commissioner. Securing your family, your business, your property. That's what's important in your world. No matter how big, no matter how small, secure your world with Imperial Fire Alarm and Security today. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security is a local company with hometown service, the way it should be. One call to Imperial will align you with the most effective fire alarm security and surveillance systems, as well as state-of-the-art wireless monitoring. If you're a property manager or condo association member, ask about Imperial's wireless monitoring systems to replace costly and unreliable phone lines and save your community thousands. From individual homes to large communities, Imperial Fire Alarm and Security can secure your world. Don't you think it's time to secure your world? Imperial Fire Alarm and Security services Lee, Charlotte, and Collier County. Learn more at imperialfiresecurity.com or to schedule your free consultation, call 239-288-6482. Secure your world at imperialfiresecurity.com. License number EF200046. When it comes to landscaping, farming, or just cutting the grass, no one knows more than Matt Miller Tractor. They offer a huge selection of tractors and mowers for all your needs. Whether it's large commercial development or a small family project, they are your one-stop shop. Matt Miller Tractor is dedicated to providing their customers with the top-of-the-line products and services, all under one roof. Matt Miller takes great pride in his customer service, bringing top brands to you and offering best-of-industry warranties on all product lines. If you're looking for that one-of-a-kind make or model, they have all the top names. Snapper, Polar, King Cutter, Briggs & Stratton, and more. Sale, service. Service, repair, and maintenance for 20 years. Once you experience their down-home approach to business, you'll see why Matt Miller Tractor is second to none. They treat each customer like a neighbor, because that's what you are. Call Matt Miller Tractor at 239-693-0305. That's 239-693-0305. Or stop by the store at 7261 West State Road 80. She thinks my tractor's sexy. Hi, I'm Matt Miller. Would you like to help to restore the American dream, own a home, and be able to provide for your family? Then vote for me so we can make a difference. Restore our economic future. Vote Matt Miller, November 6th. Let's take back our country. I am Matt Miller, a fair and responsible choice. Political party advertisement paid for and approved by Matt Miller, Independence Party, for Lee County Commissioner. Foreclosures are at an all-time high. And here in southwest Florida, we're at the center of the storm. I'm Mike Chinopoulos of Absolute Law in Fort Myers. If you find yourself facing the possibility of foreclosure, it's important to have an attorney on your side, someone who understands your legal options. Call Absolute Law at 239-349-8010. As an experienced attorney and former judge, I've helped people like you navigate their way through the often confusing foreclosure process. When the mortgage bills are piling up, it may seem like there's nowhere to turn, but help is available. At Absolute Law, we understand what you're going through, and we'll aggressively fight for your rights. So let me be your advocate. Call today for a free legal consultation, 239-349-8010. Remember, if you have questions concerning foreclosure, I can help. Call me, Mike Chinopoulos of Absolute Law, at 239-349-8010. That's 349-8010. Or find us online at absolutelaw.net. Absolute Law, a law firm you can trust 
Absolutely. The nicest used cars anywhere in the country are right here in Naples, and they're all on NaplesUsedCars.com. Hundreds of extra clean, low mileage used cars at a fraction of their original prices. All makes, all models. Are you in need of a quality luxury vehicle? Then NaplesUsedCars.com is your one stop shop with BMW 3 Series starting at just $13,990. A Mercedes Benz SLK Roadster for only $16,990. And a Jaguar XK8 on sale right now for $18,990. Plus, at NaplesUsedCars.com, you will find hundreds of quality pre-owned cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs from Toyota, Honda, Dodge, Hyundai, Nissan, Chevrolet, and more. All on clearance for a very limited time only. Browse at your own pace 24 hours a day. Get your trade value, your interest rate, your down payment, your monthly payment. Even fill out your credit app online. Plus, we'll buy your car even if you don't buy one of ours. Visit NaplesUsedCars.com. That's NaplesUsedCars.com. Plus, tax tag and title fee sponsored by Jermaine. The Purple Ringer, Southwest Florida's premier smoke shop, wants you to know that you don't have to sacrifice quality when it comes to glass. The Purple Ringer has the highest quality American-made glass at the best prices. Other places sell glass from China and from the Middle East. Buy American and buy at the Ringer. And the Ringer staff is knowledgeable. And that helps when the party's over because the Ringer is your source for detoxification cleansers. The Purple Ringer. For 18 years, the tobacco shop with the hippie flavor. 3915 Broadway, 200 feet from the Edison Mall. The big yellow building. The Purple Ringer supports buying American-made products. The Purple Ringer is a tobacco shop with the hippie flavor, and they get more new stuff every single day. This place has it all. The Purple Ringer. Open now, 3915 Broadway, 200 feet north of Edison Mall. Call 936-RING. Have you been through the Ringer? Talking our hometown, our state. And the state of our country. Now back to the Ledge Radio Show with JD and Smitty on 96 K Rock. Talk, Talk it rocks. rocks. Welcome back. Phone lines are open. The numbers are 239 277 9600 or 775 9600. You can check out our live stream at the Ledge Radio Show.com. You can find us uh, on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Ledge Radio Show. I'd like to welcome in the studio this morning uh, District 78 State House, the Republican nominee. Uh, candidate for State House, Heather Fitzenhagen. Heather, thanks for being here. Thank you. Good morning. Oh, Smitty's giving oh, you the official nice. clap. Oh, That's Smitty's go. official clap. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Smitty. Don't get any closer to him. She might actually catch you. <laughs> <laughs> Byron, thanks for being back, buddy. No, nah, it's no problem. I love being here. I know you do. I don't know how you put up with Smitty as many times as you've seen him. He loves me. He's, is he growing on you? No. Like a, like, like <laughs> a wart? I make sure we keep that all. Like a cancer? <laughs> well, we appreciate you guys coming in. Uh, Heather, you know you're you've got a, a race coming up. You just a couple weeks, man. Just a couple weeks before the uh, the 18 election. Eighteen days. Who's counting? Eighteen. Eighteen. I was reading your bio, man. It's quite impressive. Really? Holy moly, man! You went. You did everything. You had to do anything but go to school. My goodness. <laughs> it's a Texas bar, Florida bar, um, the civil circuit mediator, family mediator, foreclosure mediator, graduate of Harvard mediation program. I went to Harvard. It was a party one night. <laughs> and, uh, He's got a shirt. <laughs> and, uh, so, I mean, it's. I mean, you're you're busy, man. You hang with the overachievers, don't you? Oh well, my goodness! I'm just a hard worker. I'm telling She's you. Smart. Smart. I got a I got a fence you can paint after this if you want. <laughs> well, what's um you know you you've had a you've had a good race you know we had a had a, a primary that uh, that obviously you got through yes you squeaked through yes just barely but we, we all worked hard sure and, and um, eighteen days to go what 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 sets you apart from from who you're running against I'm not going to ask you who it is but what what's the difference between you and and your opponent. Well, the, uh, I really don't know my opponent, so I really can't speak to um, his his qualities. I can just say that, um, as Smitty mentioned, um, when I decide to do something, I, I get after it all the way. Put your mind to it and go. Put my mind to it. Um, I'm ready to represent. I'm going to give it 100%. You're uh, tirelessly work for the district, and uh, I don't think anybody's going to work harder than I am. And, and you know, you're, you're, you're an experienced business owner, um, an entrepreneur, attorney, certified media, or I'm sure like uh, Smitty was saying. So you've yes. got a lot of things, and I think a lot of those qualities uh, would help at the uh, state house level, especially the business owner part, entrepreneur, because you know that's you're our first line of defense. You know, I'm a business owner, and and it's folks like you who help businesses like mine succeed. Because you can either you can either you know shut them down by by overregulation, or you can help us succeed by 
given us the tools we need to, uh, you know, to, to grow. Absolutely. I mean, that um, one of the reasons I, I ran for office was because I think we needed a strong voice in Tallahassee that would understand what the business person needed. And I knew that some of the skills from being a lawyer and a mediator would come in handy up there um, trying to sort through new laws and maybe even repeal some laws that aren't yeah. so great. But, well, I mean, it, would, it yeah. would take an attorney to understand most of the laws, right? <laughs> it probably is a is a good start. Sure, <laughs> sure. But uh, absolutely, I mean, one of my main focuses is to try to improve our business environment so that we can create more jobs. I mean, my uh, main thing is we need more taxpayers, not more taxes. So um, I'm going to be working hard to improve our business environment. Well, and that's something we talked about earlier with uh, State House Rep uh, Matt Hudson was, you know, if we can if we can make the Make the business environment friendlier and continue to make it friendlier in the state of Florida. That's only going to help our state. You're going to get employers able to hire more. They can pay more. And when you can pay more, it can, you can attract uh, employees from other states even that want to relocate. Well, it's critical that we do that because that's exactly what we need to do is be able to attract new businesses to our area. We have a great environment in terms of a place to live, and employers will want to be here if we can do a couple of things. Obviously, improve the business environment, streamline the uh, fees and, and things that are necessary to start a business. Also, if we can uh, make sure that the employers know that we are serious about higher education, um, we've got FGCU working, we've got Edison State, and if they know that they're going to be able to have their employees have a great environment to come and work to, they will think about relocating. Absolutely. I mean, Byron, that's that's what we've been talking about this whole time is, you know, not not just Florida, but obviously with Heather in here, of course, it's about Florida, but that, that goes across that goes across our border. That, that goes to the federal level even. No, that's exactly right. Listen, for the listeners who are here, who this first time you might be hearing Heather Fitzenhagen, I met her, geez, it was February, March sometime in Fort Myers. We were having a conversation off to the side, and she was saying the exact same thing to me that she's saying on this air. And that was back when nobody knew who the heck I was. Or, so, or me, for that matter. So she's not, no, a, flip, so she's are, not right? a she's not a flip-flopper. No, 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 no. This is the exact no, same sir. conversation. It's the guy, guy you're running against, is he is incumbent? Is he an incumbent? No, no? this is a brand new, brand new house guy? seat. No, brand, oh, brand new house seat. Know, Forget oh, him. Wow. Just forget him altogether, okay? Brand new house this seat. is a brand new house seat because we got this from redistricting. Oh, and oh okay. And, and we redistricted because why? Was it we well, had when you more, take more the population? Census, it's a, it's, it's the a rigged the vote, baby. Okay? No, That's no, how it's not, you do it. No, it's because you, you have redistrict more population. And you, re, and you rig the vote. That's you how it happens. No. You got excuse me. You got excuse me. Yeah, I wouldn't want to dare, dare say anything that might be true. Good. The census results said, hey, we have more population. We get more representation. So that's they carved out a spot in the heart of Lee County. And that's right where I live and work and raise my kids. And so I decided I wanted to step up and run for office. Tell us a little you. bit about yourself. You're born and raised here, aren't you? Yeah. No, no? Um, but I've been here for 19 years. It's almost the same. Yeah. My husband was born here, okay. so oh, I, I get you know get that little bump. So where where, where you were you born and raised originally? What? Yes. I don't know, Minnesota. Uh, nice, nice. No, Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas. Excellent. Yeah. That's great. Dallas, everything's bigger in Texas. Dallas. You were like, you were like <laughs> well, way no, off. actually, I, I, I had was no running clue. out of town. You know, the big hair, no, it didn't work they for didn't me. They didn't like no. it, huh? Mm -mm. I used to love that show, Dallas, when I was a kid. It was great. <laughs> you like the Cowboys? I, you know, I, I did as a kid because I actually lived in I was Texas asking her. for a few years. Yes. <laughs> you like the Cowboys? You know, I'm you were actually looking at me. more of a college football fan. I'm not okay. so much a pro All right, here we go. What, what's your team? Texas a now. No, no. Well, you know, it's, it, no, I really, I really Gators. like, um, I really like both Florida State and the Gators. I really like them both. Yes. I like my Longhorns. Longhorns. I like yeah. my Longhorns. Too. I like them too, but man, they just got whipped oh, by yeah. Oklahoma. Oh yeah, annihilated. It's like annihilated. sixty-three to twenty. That was she like anything. At least like Romney. You know, she likes Florida. She likes Texas. You know, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know she like it all. I don't, you know what? I, I, I like you know Florida and Texas too. It was amazing. She, she said she liked the Gators. She liked the Seminoles. She like. <laughs> I mean, is anybody you don't like in Florida? Come on. Of course, we don't like Alabama. We don't like Alabama. Oh. Exactly. It's yeah. tough when we have two really good teams in Florida. Yeah. I mean, we're lucky. I'm glad you didn't say three really good teams because yeah, I, I know, know you were lying. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Heather, what's, yes. what's on other than uh, you know going through the laws, clearing out stuff that doesn't work for us, helping with business, mm -hmm. business expansion? What kind of other than that? What kind of other pet projects do you see you could sink your, your teeth into in the legislature? Well, I think one of the things I've already started doing is reaching out to some of the local business leaders um, and people in the community to understand their issues a little bit more thoroughly than I have just you know, starting my run for office. 
And I'm trying to find ways to get feedback from them on what we actually need specifically so I can take those suggestions up to Tallahassee to try to actually implement things that people on the ground in our community need to be able to increase their business or to attract new businesses. So that's really important to me because I think um, you can learn a lot more by listening than you can by talking. And so that's really the top thing on my agenda right now is to dig deeper and understand specifically what we need so that then I can go and articulate well, it. Well, and, and as, a, as a business owner yourself, um, you know, you, you know what it takes to run a business. You know what, what business owners need. Uh, to be able to hire folks and 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 not just the business owners, but employees themselves. You know, they employees want a good wage. They want a decent medical benefit. Um, well, they better not be in Florida. They want well, a good it, wage. it's it's true, but then there are other things out there too that we need to think about it, uh, at a bigger picture level. Um, infrastructure is critical. We need to make some expenditures on infrastructure so that we can a- attract businesses. That we can tell them, yes, we have the roads, we have the resources for you. We now, have how, cap- how long did it take us to get seventy five? Six lanes. It took us a little while. Jeez, it's about 20 years late. Right. You so know, now we need another two lanes, I'm sure. Yeah, transportation in our state Let's is a, a few is more a illegal issue. aliens out there building it, that's all. <laughs> and a lot of things, you know, we also need to start thinking about um, trading partners in, in Latin America. Um, we've got <laughs> uh, we've got an expanded port of Miami. We've got Canaveral getting dredged. We've got um, competition out of Savannah. So we, we really need to think about how are we going to be more competitive as a state and as a region. Sure. Well, you know, when it comes to the you know, building up the infrastructure, you know, I would I would like to see um, if it's state level or even county level, I don't know where a lot of the uh, decisions are made when it comes to infrastructure and roads. I guess it, maybe it depends if it's a state road or, or what have you. But just making sure that the road is, if they're doing a new road or a bridge, make sure it's being built by a good company that's not killing us with costs and overruns. I mean, I don't know what kind of things, what kind of uh, safety nets and and provisions we have in place to check these companies to make sure they're doing a good job. But Well, I, I think we do have um, some safety nets, but I think that what I would say, too, is any kind of project that we're going to take on of that magnitude, mm-hmm. we have to make sure that I, I believe we need to make sure that it's a Florida company. I don't want to be outsourcing projects like that from the, our state when we need to have jobs. Sure. So if that's critical, and if I have anything to say about it, that's what we'll be doing. That'd be that'd be nice. And, and there there's plenty of Florida companies that do that type of Absolutely. work. Absolutely. Some great companies. Yeah. Uh, Byron, what uh, what else you got for man? I know there's got to be something on your mind. You know, there's always something, Perkley. I'm going to expand nationally. So what you've been thinking, I know what the Smitty thinks, because he's always thinking something that's out in left field. What do you think about what's going of on in course, the national Of course, because I'm down here in the red state of the world. <laughs> well, I am really encouraged um, by the polling that's taking place on the, for the Romney-Ryan ticket. Oh, yes. I am so excited. I mean, I... I can't even hardly stand it. The momentum is building, and um, I thought um, I can't stand it either. So I'm with you. Yeah. No. <laughs> you know why? You know, here, here's the thing. You know, when you look back in, in history, and, and history is very important to remember. You know, and everybody says it. Ronald Reagan, he he was behind in the polls, but with Jimmy Carter up until I don't know six or eight mm-hmm. weeks before the election, maybe even sooner. Well, that's the way Romney was this whole time. Now look mm-hmm. at it. After it's, now we're at fifty one forty five. Peaking perfectly. I mean, yes. it's just the right. This is the time. It's, it doesn't matter. You, you, you don't have to lead at the first year. You know that you guys start your your election cycle. And did you see him at the dinner? I mean, did you see Romney at the Al Smith dinner? I mean, dinner? was oh. that incredible? I thought, wow, he really connected. He was he was witty. He was smart. And, you know everything. I, I tell you what. I tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, you know, after after the break, um, I, I've actually got that audio, mm-hmm. and it's a long audio, so we don't have to play it. It, all. it was funny. It, it was, it was for a, it was for a good cause. I, I, I know, swear, I think Dennis Miller wrote it for him because it was hilarious. Seriously. It was brilliant. Did you get to go to the uh, to the Ryan rally the other night? I did not. Oh, it was awesome. Yeah, I'm sorry I missed that. It was awesome. Uh, Dennis Miller showed up, surprise guest. I love Dennis Miller. Yeah, he was he was great. And every, you know, it was like kind of like it wasn't dead air, but like they stopped speaking, mm-hmm. and then they had a few songs playing uh, in the background, and we, I was like, "What are we waiting for? What's going on here? We got to wait right till 7:15." And then Dennis Miller walks out. I'm like, "Oh man, this is great. Yeah. That, that was wonderful." Excellent. Of course, I had like the worst seats in the house. I'm like. Three hundred thousand people deep, so you know, I, my little, I, my little camera couldn't even see him, but it was still cool. I got to hear him. I was, I was pleased. That was my rant. I'm sorry. That's your rant. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm just excited about where we're headed, and um, yeah. I have every hope that we're going to bring it home uh, on November sixth with the Romney Ryan ticket, and that maybe we'll even be able to get to repeal Obamacare. And if we, oh, and, if, and if you do lose, what's going to happen then? 
Well, I'm going to cry first. Okay. Yeah, well, big yeah. tears. Okay. We'll have you on for that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> she's not, she's not going to lose. She's got this. No, she's going to win. No, she, no she's, she's, she's going to get to independent. The guy's not even affiliated with Democratic you know Republican. Carrie Bob, Bab, Bab, B A B B. Something like that. Is it okay for you to mention it? I, I, I don't Who? mind. Carrie. I don't know that person. Anyway, it, it, I, next question. Carrie Babb. <laughs> B-A-B-B. Next Carrie question. Babb, he's an independent. Running against Harry Fitz, uh, Fitz, uh, Fitz and Hagen. Then. What? You said Running against who? Is that your maiden name, or is, did you take your husband's name? or? That's my original That's name. That's your original name. My original birth name, Okay, yes. so you didn't take your husband's last name? You, you I kept did not. You know, we, um, That's interesting. we both were professionals, and we mm-hmm. decided that since... I got married um, after I'd been working for a substantial period of time, and people knew me that we would actually just have keep, maintain our names. I didn't ask him to change his sure. name. It was great. It was fine. It worked out really you well. You know, I changed my name to come on this show because I didn't think that my other professional name would work out. Buck Naked wasn't too suitable. <laughs> <laughs> Dirk Diggler. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, uh, we're, gonna, we're coming up on a hard break. Uh, we'll be back in just a few moments. Uh, we've got uh, uh, candidate Republican nominee, a state house candidate, Heather Fitzenhagen in, from District 78, and uh, when we get back, we'll uh, share some more time with her. We'll be right back. You never know what we're going to say or do. Take 96 K Rock wherever you go with the iRadio Now app. iRadio Now. Available for free on all smartphones, including Android. Right. The biggest personalities in radio entertainment. Available on one app. iRadio Now. The iRadio Now app for all smartphones. Just go to the App Store and search iRadio Now. And download it for free. Brought to you by Jason and Todd at the Diamond District, Coconut Point. Visit 96krock.com for more information. iRadio Now. 96 K Rock. I am Matt Miller. You are Matt Miller. We are Matt Miller. Vote for me November 6th. Or you can vote early at the Supervisor of Elections, downtown Fort Myers, so we can make a difference and restore fiscal responsibility and economic development to our area. I am a believer. I am your neighbor. I am you. I am Matt Miller, a fair and responsible choice. Political party advertisement paid for and approved by Matt Miller, Independence Party for Lee County Commissioner. Securing your family, your business, your property. That's what's important in your world. No matter how big, no matter how small, secure your world with Imperial Fire Alarm and Security today. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security is a local company with hometown service the way it should be. One call to Imperial will align you with the most effective fire alarm security and surveillance systems as well as state-of-the-art wireless monitoring. If you're a property manager or condo association member, ask about Imperial's wireless monitoring systems to replace costly and unreliable phone lines and save your community thousands from individual homes to large communities. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security can secure your world. Don't you think it's time to secure your world? Imperial Fire Alarm and Security services lead Charlotte and Collier County. Learn more at imperialfiresecurity.com or to schedule your free consultation, call 239-288-6482. Secure your world at imperialfiresecurity.com. License number EF200046. Southwest Florida knows that Duncan's Diamonds has the best prices, but it's their quality, selection, and excellent customer service that keeps customers coming back year after year. And Duncan's Diamonds customers have great things to say. Their sales team is extremely helpful and knowledgeable. I've shopped at other jewelry stores, but there's no place like Duncan's Diamonds. And I tell all my friends to come here every chance I get. At Duncan's Diamonds, I found everything I was looking for. Great designers. I was awfully impressed with their hearts on fire, diamonds, and jewelry. You know, they're really amazing. The customer service is excellent. You know, you're free to take your time and browse without being hassled, and all your questions are answered. I've been to every chain jewelry store, department store, and independently owned stores. None of them beat Duncan's Diamonds prices. They are the best. I had some jewelry to sell, and by far, Duncan's Diamonds paid me the most cash and paid on the spot. Duncan's Diamonds put your mind at ease. Best quality at the best price. Discover Duncan's Diamonds, Fort Myers on US-41, and in the Gulf Coast Town Center, where you'll find the largest selection at the best prices in Southwest Florida. Are you tired of the same old wasteful spending of our tax dollars? Are you tired of seeing large parts of our county undeveloped with no jobs for our communities? Are you tired of career politicians that promise to represent you and then turn their focus on special interests and the few? Then vote your conscience. Vote Matt Miller for Lee County Commissioner. I am Matt Miller, a fair and responsible choice. Political party advertisement paid for and approved by Matt Miller, Independence Party for Lee County Commissioner. Attention, Pittsburgh Steelers fans and New England Patriots fans. Football is here, and it's live at Groove Street Grill and Laugh-In Comedy Cafe. If you're a Steelers fan, you need to come out to Groove Street Grill to watch the games, where we show the Pittsburgh Steelers games exclusively on all our TVs and big screens. And if you're a Patriots fan, come to the Laugh-In Comedy Cafe, which is home to the New England Patriots fan club and features the past games 
shows exclusively on all our TVs and big screens. Bruce Street Grill and Laugh-In Comedy Cafe are right next door to each other and are located in the College Plaza Shopping Center at 8595 College Parkway in Fort Myers. Our kitchen serves both rooms with the same great menu with football specials and both rooms offer a full bar with drink specials on game day and game day is always smoke-free in both rooms. So Steelers fans, Patriots fans, come out and meet the fans where fans meet at Group Street Grill and Laugh and Comedy Cafe. For more information, call 437-2743. That's 437-2743. Doors open one hour before game starts. Visit Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. I love the weekends. You can't beat the beach. The sand, the hot sun. Todd, when was the last time you were at the beach? Jace, while you and I are at the Diamond District all weekend, there are some people who go to the beach. And I'm just saying how nice that must be. And after the beach, if you're in the market for a diamond, you won't find a better value or diamond buying experience than the Diamond District. In Estero at Coconut Point. With diamond prices at or below the internet. At the Diamond District. You know... So many people are going to be so happy this month to get their new 40-inch flat-screen TV. And I've seen so much traffic all of a sudden on our website, Caroline. Would you go over that website with them right now? It's HugeKiaCredit.com. www.HugeKiaCredit.com. That's right, Caroline. And they it's really go online. Simple. It's that easy to fill out an application. I, I work the banks myself. I tell you, it's never been a better time out here in the month of October myself. And all you folks that go online, we get you approved, we put you in a newer used vehicle, and when you take delivery, we load up one of those 40-inch flat screens. So you not only get a car, but you get a flat screen to watch the ball games on Sunday afternoons. That's right. Don't prejudge your credit because chances are we can find the terms that suit your needs here. At Huge 40 here. inches, Caroline, with every purchase. I tell you something, I'm excited, Caroline. Why? Caroline, why? Yeah. Because I'm going to make everybody in Southwest Florida what? Huge. Tired of overpaying for auto repairs? <laughs> yeah, so was I. Now I take my vehicle to Affordable Auto and Tire Service. They're trustworthy, completely upfront. They won't try to sell you something you don't need. Family owned and operated, over 25 years experience with ASE certified technicians. Affordable Auto and Tire Service can help you with all your auto maintenance and repair needs. From a blown fuse to an engine replacement, they do it all for much less. Schedule your appointment today. 239-498-0946. 498-0946. Affordable Auto and Tire Service in Bonita Springs. Total car care for less. Let's get back to work, please. So, you know, go ahead. Now back to the Ledge Radio Show with J.D. and Smitty on 96 k Rock. Talk that rocks. rocks. Welcome back. Phone lines are open. The numbers are 239-277-9600 or 775-9600. You can check out our live stream at theledgeradioshow.com. You can also find us at facebook.com forward slash ledgeradioshow. I want to welcome back in studio with us. We've got the District 78 State House Republican nominee, Heather Fitzenhagen. Heather, thanks for being back with us. It's great to be here. Uh, Byron, thank you also for staying with us uh, for the whole show. Man, we appreciate you being with us and putting up with Smitty all this time. Next time I'm trying to make it not so much, okay? Just, <laughs> just come on in and say hi, and then we'll be good. Smitty, man, it's a little awesome. <laughs> Listen to Heather, man. Byron How do you like awesome. my shirt? <laughs> I told you, that's distracting me, man. <laughs> See how you are? You just slam me for my does, shirt. He does look like, like cotton it? candy. Look. It says right there. That's for the, the cure. <laughs> for the cure. That's right my favorite there, flavor. Okay. No, you're doing a wonderful thing over there. Save the top tiles. That's what I say. If you feel somebody licking your shirt, it's not me. <laughs> it probably hey, would be. <laughs> you know, before we went to break, uh, actually, I don't know when we were talking about earlier, we were talking about uh, Romney and, and Obama at the Al Smith event. Yeah, that's uh, great. Byron, what, you know, I don't even know. I didn't even research it. What is, what are they... What is the Al Smith event? It, it, it happens. Uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, charity event. Yeah, it's a charity event once a year that's done by the uh, the Dios, the Catholic Church yes. in, in the New, York. Of New York. And right? um, yeah, and every four years the presidential candidates always go. It's okay. kind of like a rite of passage now for the presidential ah. candidates. And in this particular one, you know, I think Romney used that to his complete advantage. To take the president apart, oh, oh, funny, man. funny man, yeah. and it was just. I, it was I swear, I swear, I think Dennis Miller wrote these lines for I mean, him. He showed a great side of himself that a lot of people hadn't had a chance to see. You know, I didn't think that um, that he was funny like that, but he actually he actually gave the punchlines perfectly. I thought. Oh, he was good. Yeah. I was I was like I'm watching. I'm like, is that Mitt Romney? Is that the same guy? He, he's actually a real human. You know, the timing was <laughs> there. Yeah, it was good. Absolutely. Well, sick Rick, we got it queued up. Uh, let's let's play that cut, please. I'm. Uh glad to be able to join in this uh, venerable tradition. Of course, I'm, I'm pleased that the president's here. We were chatting pleasantly this evening as if Tuesday night never happened. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
I credit that, of course, to the Cardinal. He has, uh, it's taken New York's highest spiritual authority to get us back on our best behavior. <laughs> I, I was actually hoping the President would bring Joe Biden along uh, this evening, because he'll laugh at anything. <laughs> Of course, this isn't a night for serious politics, and it was especially nice to see President Obama and Cardinal Dolan sharing the uh, dais despite uh, their differences. I'm sure the Cardinal has no hard feelings, and we might get an indication of that uh, during dinner to see if the President's wine turns into water. <laughs> Or, for that matter, whether my water turns into wine. <laughs> I'm uh, pleased to once again have the chance to see Governor Cuomo, who's already being talked about for a uh, higher office. A uh, very impressive fellow. But he may be getting a little ahead of himself. I mean, let me get this straight. The man is put in one term as a governor. He has a father who happened to be a governor. And he thinks that's enough to run for president. <laughs> that's great. I had to watch it on YouTube. Of course, we're down to the final months of the president's term. As president's <laughs> <laughs> I just got that. That was like dry. Was As good. President yeah. Obama surveys the Waldorf banquet room with everyone in white tie and finery, you have to wonder what he's thinking. So little time. So much to redistribute. So much to redistribute. <laughs> <laughs> That is the yeah, truth right there. They, I think they panned out to Obama. I bet he was not happy. I bet he wasn't. No, he, was he wasn't happy. laughing. He grinned. Grinned. I'm going to get this guy. Oh, and funny. don't be surprised if the uh, president mentions this evening the monthly jobs report where there was a slight improvement in the numbers. He knows how to seize the moment, this president, and already has a compelling new campaign slogan. You're better off now than you were four weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Romney was on, man. That was pretty good. I like you know, uh, all the time. with or without all the dignitaries that are here, the Al Smith dinner surely lives up to its billing. Usually when I get invited to gatherings like this, it's just to be the designated driver. <laughs> <laughs> right, he doesn't drink. Your kind hospitality here tonight gives me a chance to convey my deep and long... Oh, I guess that's it. Yeah, that's all we got. Sick Rick over here, Mr. Technical Difficulty. Oh, no, he's back. <laughs> Your kind hospitality here tonight gives me a chance to convey my deep and long-held respect for the Catholic Church, have special admiration for the Apostle St. Peter, to whom it is said, Upon this rock I will build my church. The story is all the more inspiring when you consider that he had so many skeptics and scoffers at the time who were heard to say, If you got a church, you didn't build that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And that's the point where some of the Obama fans were like, uh, this is getting too much. Of course, only 19 days to go into the finish line. Campaign full of surprises. The debates are very exciting. Just the other night, we had a very fun debate. Candy Crowley was there and was happy to welcome us. But uh, people seem to be very curious as to how we prepare for the debates. Let me tell you what I do. First, refrain from alcohol for 65 years before the debate. <laughs> Second, find the biggest available straw man and then just mercilessly attack it. <laughs> Big Bird didn't even see it coming. <laughs> and by the way, in, uh, in the spirit of Sesame Street, the President's remarks tonight are brought to you by the letter O and the number 16 trillion. Nice. <laughs> there it is. I know, that is. There it is. <laughs> Wait, tripod Bill, he's, he's freaking out back there. Yeah, that was good. That was classic. <laughs> but all through the... I like to know who his writers were. They were good. I think yeah. it was Dennis Miller. Really? Campaigns can be uh, grueling, exhausting. President Obama and I are each very lucky to have one person who's always in our corner, someone who we can <laughs> lean on, and someone who's uh, a comforting presence without whom we wouldn't be able to go another day. I have my beautiful wife, Anne. He has Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> We got a big dose of the Biden charm last week, I'll tell you that, in his uh, debate with Paul Ryan. I'm not sure that all that carrying on had quite the effect that Joe intended, because afterwards I heard from the Federal Election Commission, 
From now on, whenever he appears on TV, there's a recording of me afterwards that says, I'm Mitt Romney and I approve this message. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sick, Rick. Let's, let's, of course, rules of fairness. get the point on this one. But that, that was pretty good, though. You know, now, Obama, you know, in his defense, I guess, I mean, he, he had some pretty good zingers, too. Um, I don't think that he was under the impression that Romney was going to go after him like that. I, I think had he known that, he would have had a much different script. Because he had some funny things to say, but... It wasn't near to this caliber. He may have, but I don't think any of us really knew how witty Romney could be, you know, in this in that. Well, he's not. Well, he's not witty. His writers are. Yeah, but he delivered it. <laughs> his Did writers. you listen to Obama deliver his? It looked like he read it for the first time. While I, was I like. I like Obama said. I like him more I, I, and more. The more I like I hear when from Obama man, said. He, I like him more. He said, "Mitt is your middle name," and he says, "I, I wish, wish I, I could say, use my middle name." Well, had he not, change, had he not changed his name? That was funny. Had he not changed his name to a Muslim like, name? Maybe he well, could use it. Well, like I said, it, it wasn't for a serious. It was. No. It was for a good good cause. A good cause. It was for a good cause. I think what happened in that in that format is the president and his team didn't think they were going to see that. Romney. And, it's, and it's, the funny right. thing is, they've been surprised this entire time about mm -hmm. the Mitt Romney that's come mm -hmm. to the stage. Right. It seems at every every point they've been surprised by it. Um, in the second debate, I think, you know, the president, we talked about this earlier, the president tried to use energy to come across as winning a debate, but energy is not substance. It's not, it doesn't answer the questions. Right. Energy is not and substance. E and even, when, you, and even when you've got the moderator on your side shilling for you. Okay. You know, it, it still doesn't answer the question. Well, the next debate's Monday, right? Yeah, Monday. 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 Lynn University. Foreign Bo policy. Bo and I think, I think that's going to be really exciting because the foreign policy issues, I think, that have been teed up um, for Romney are going to be great. Yeah. Um, and I, I think he's going to come across very strong again. Well, I do, too. Yeah. I think after the recent events in Benghazi, I mean, you've got a lot of recent ammunition to use if Absolutely. you use it properly, um, politically uh, properly, because there's been some major failures on it at the administration level uh, just in Benghazi itself. It's disturbing. I mean, it's it is. When disturbing. you see all that's come out now, you know. Well, you're in a war zone. What do you expect? No, I mean, no, you're there's, in a war zone. no there's, there's soldiers in a war zone. Yeah. These guys who come up with this this crap, these lies, they're not in the war zone. No, the, the, the whole area is decimated with, with radicals over there. So, you know, if you go in there and you think nobody's going to die, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're living in time the sky world. Well, that's, they've got a utopian uh, world outlook. They think that the world is, is if you're friendly to them, they're going to be friendly back these people hate us i've seen this the facebook ad there was a billboard ad said stop sending money over there let them hate us for free i, I, I totally agree with that here's the problem we have over there in libya yeah it's there are radicals that live in that part of the world but this goes to the heart of the president's foreign policy mindset and agenda nobody wants to go back and relitigate this but the truth is if we did not help in the ouster of muammar Gaddafi, our our our, our ambassador will be alive today. That's true. Well, Gaddafi had the radicals on the run in Libya. That is without question. I'm no fan of the man. Well, he's a he's a he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a nice guy. But, we, 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 but he wasn't wish, the Muslim Brotherhood. Wish have could have would have should have. I've got go the back. radicals on the run here in District 78. That's right. I want to and I want to get back to her. You know, Heather Fitz and Megan <laughs> live oh, in the studio. Oh, two of them. <laughs> uh, on, on, we got we got this in the last minute and a half. Right. You know, Heather's running for District 78 State House. She's the Republican nominee for the ticket. So Republican and Democrats alike, I think in the general they can vote across Yeah, and since lines. you guys didn't give me enough time here on the radio today, mm -hmm. I mean, if people want to know more, exactly. they can go to heatherfitzenhagen.com. Heatherfitzenhagen.com. <laughs> spell your last name. Really? <laughs> <Sorry? laughs> yeah, I'll spell it. I'll spell it. F-I-T-Z-E-N-H-A-N. G E N. Perfect. Very good. I good got job, it in man. front of me. That's why you were looking it's at somebody's shirt. It's phonetic. It's so easy. Well, yeah, I, I can tell phonetic. you, of all the candidates we've had in here, she's the most pleasantly looking one out of all of them. <laughs> I'm I can sure. tell you. I mean, Byron, you're second, hey, okay? Man, but she's I'm number saying, one. I'm sitting right here. Oh, always a bride, made never a bride. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you know, we appreciate you putting up with us. I mean, my pleasure. You know how it is when you got people like over here. Yeah, yeah. Byron, don't don't, don't talk. Byron's right there. Don't talk about him. I thought Byron was. Oh, we can get, get we can get Byron in here, and we can get uh, David Dow in here again. Yeah, we'd have a Hebrew. Thank you guys ah, so much. Stop <laughs> it, Heather. Thanks for coming. Thank in. you. I thanks, really Heather. enjoyed it. Well, next <laughs> week. Uh, back. Next week we'll talk about the next debate. <laughs> yep. Uh, so join us then. And call 10, in, 10 a.m. next Saturday, the Ledge Radio Show with JD and Smitty. Thanks. Us ladies love Halloween.